You guys know what happened to Harper? Uh, he happened died. Harper. What? He didn't tell you guys? He's dead currently. He texted me. He said, I'm dead. Oh, is he off to fight Doomsday in hell? Probably, yeah. He's fighting for King of Hell because he went oh. to hell because he died. So, mm. why, did he, why did he go to hell, though? I, I, I think we all know. <laughs> you can't leave him alone in a room for too long. He's like, well, well, since I'm here, I may as well. Yeah. <laughs> I might as well I mean, try to true. be king. It's because like all dogs go to heaven, and since he really hurt his dog, he went to hell. That's like, exactly yeah, just yeah. <laughs> cosmic justice or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That makes sense. Yeah, it's where um, he belongs. Yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah, it's in. better better than here, is it? He's there. He's there with that guy on your shirt. Who's that guy? Show everyone who's on your shirt. <laughs> Stanley Excelsior. <laughs> They're hanging out in hell right now. Do you think he would go go to hell? Harper? Yes. Stan- Stanley. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, Stanley's been dead for a few years, so if he went or not, Stanley. he's already there. Listen, yeah, yeah, he's there. <laughs> They're all there. <laughs> They're I all mean, there. like he, Dicko's he's... there, Stanley's there, Jack Kirby's there. Dick on there. <laughs> I I feel like in the end, like Stan, he he, there's some like bad things about him because he business wise, business books. wise, but I think he oh, is a good person. <laughs> yeah, Stanley's he was a he seemed like I, I, I think he made least. up for it on the back end. Like I think he was like I mean he was a businessman. You got to do some things. I get it, but like he kind of treated Dicko and Kirby kind of shitty. Yeah, he did. Happens, I guess he did. But you know, it's it's also under the I rug. Realized, like, but literally next to me, I have the picture of me meeting Stanley. Even though I don't have like, I just have it on me. I don't, I'm not. I'm not in this picture. It's the next picture sequentially. Do you I take a that picture one on me? of the so senior picture with him? I, I I think I do somewhere, but not on me. See, but I, I wish there's I a picture Stan- of Stanley. I wish I would have met Stanley. Like that's one of my bigger regrets in life. I have the the thing I have signed, but it's off. It's like up there, but you can't what do you have signed? It, obviously. It's a Funko Pop. <laughs> it was like what they sold. It was like get this Funko Pop signed by Stan Lee. Is it, and it's is like, it of Stan Lee? Yeah, it's of Stan Lee. Oh, okay. Oh, it's, it's like a like New that. York Comic Con convention exclusive. But like, it's like I—I I mean, he's gonna die soon. You have to, no matter what, you get signed by him. He would have signed like so. yeah, my only pair a dumbass would meet him twice and not get anything signed. I regret that. Yeah. But you have pictures, right? You have, I like I got, full pictures I of you, pictures, like yeah with him not, yeah. not guns to his head but like point like, like <laughs> yeah 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 exactly. can you give me the play-by-play of both times hunter like how it went like oh i do said, have one right or... here hold on i'll, I'll grab oh, it oh the picture the picture of him meeting stanley oh that's our that's uh, our thumbnail this week it, it, if he ever wow. you know, finds i'm pretty it. sure he's in a spider-man suit in one of them there it is and one's with got dad, one of them here which is right there yeah there it is, there there it is. <laughs> wow you and so, uncle so, ben. so give me the story of this meeting <laughs> Uh, well, this is the second time. The first time <laughs> I was with my dad, I was in, I think, grade nine or something. I was very young, mm-hmm. but we went to meet him. And Two. it's only like, because it's Stan Lee and everyone wants to see him, you're in there for like 10 seconds. <laughs> so, yeah. It's like so, a conveyor belt. Yeah, literally. Yeah. yeah. And you, you go around, you, you pose, you take a picture. And I, I, I remember I looked at Stan Lee and I went, hi. He went, hey. And then that was it. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. I think I was I I, I might have been like 12 when I met Stanley. That was the oh, only wow. time I w- ever met him, but at least I get to say I did, dude. Yeah, that's you what know? I'm saying. Like I I never met him. I, yeah, I never really for, had a chance to. He lived for a but... long time, dude. He did. <laughs> so and you, you still missed you out. You could have, yeah. JD. Him and Ditko, they both I mean Ditko didn't go to conventions. He didn't so, show up anywhere, so but my... My godfather told me a story that he was a, a cop. He was in New York. Steve Ditko. He was Steve Ditko. He was a cop in New York, like in the Bronx, I guess, where Steve Ditko was living. And he said he never visited him, but cops that he worked with went to his like studio one time and they met Steve Ditko. And he oh, said, nice. as a comic fan, that was one of his regrets because Ditko never made like public appearances. I mean, you can't even find pictures of Ditko. Like, yeah, well, because he hated life. all that stuff. That's but why. Like, that's damn. why Spider Man is the way he is. Like, if you look at the Marvel universe, every character is hanging out. They're crossing over. But the two outliers that did not hang out with everyone were the two Steve Ditko characters, which were Spider Man and Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange yeah. So, yeah. like, what does that tell you about about Steve? Well, Ditko? especially especially those early Spider Man. Now you've read them. Like those early Spider Man yeah. books. Peter's. Well, a I, dick. I read them when I was a kid, but yeah, I, I haven't read them since then. But yeah, he's especially because like most of those. You know, early Marvel things are dictated by the the artist, artist more than the yeah, more than Stan Lee. Like Ditko's writing those issues pretty Ditko much. Ditko draws with, the entire issue, yeah. and then and then Stan just and has then, his speech bubbles. Yeah, exactly. That's mm-hmm. you know the Marvel method, wild. and and it's a, Ditko. Yeah, that's a weird way. Yeah, to do it. You can tell like 
the funniest thing about the Marvel method is that like you can tell when Stan is really annoyed at something that Kirby or Ditko put in the books because he was like, we didn't agree on that. Like, you know, it's like that in- that issue where they introduce the Silver Surfer in Fantastic Four. Like the first dialogue box is like, who's this? And it's because Stan was like, who is this? Like, yeah, I don't who even know who the this- silver guy is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't even know who this guy is. You also, know? very unique naming there by a fucking Marvel. Yeah, like, silver he's Surfer. A silver guy in a surfboard. Silver Surfer. <laughs> it's like an early But it's like iconic issues. now. Of yeah, course. like <laughs> when they introduce Wonder Man and his like, you know, Christmas costume, green and red and whatnot there's a line by like someone where they're like his costume is stupid and it's because i, I assume stan was just like jack hate drew a it. stupid design yeah nope. jack drew a dumbass design here i hate it so i'm gonna, I'm gonna make fun of it I'm trying to think there was there was one in fantastic four where they make fun of the guy i can't remember who it is though but yeah it's another one where stan just hated the design yeah he must have just and like it's funny because when, he, when he answers the letter pages just like too, fuck this like the letter pages will be like we love this new character when are we gonna see him and stan's like well we'll see because clearly, like, Stan has yeah. no idea if they're going to be in more stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's Scott Stanley. I mean, have you guys watched that documentary about him, the new one? I got to watch no. that. Disney Plus. Yeah. I watched yeah. it. Is it good? And, you know, there's, there's a big, I, I thought it was good, but there's a big, you know, people debating on if it's accurate to, like, you know, what happened and whatnot. And I don't think I care anymore. Well, the, like, well, the biggest you know, problem is that it's a lot of hearsay. I mean, like, yeah, it's all, and they're all dead. Stan says one thing, Jack says another. Who's yeah. to know us? The truth somewhere there's, in the middle, baby. There's like literally no one alive today right. who was there anymore. They're right. all dead, and so like all we can do is just kind of like you know look at them as monuments and be like, oh, they were incredible people for what they did. What like what they did in in the you know behind the scenes, in between the pages, all that. Behind the no panels. no clue behind the panels, no clue. Well, well, and I think you have to look at like what the legacy like they left behind is more <clears> important <throat> than the arguments that him and Jack had, right? Yeah, like they left behind the yeah. Fantastic Four and the Avengers and like I all love... this great the X Men. You guys have heard that uh, that radio interview where it's Stan and Jack and they're just arguing yeah. and, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's like that. those are that's literally like the two most important people for that universe in general, like two of the most important people in culture the two gods ever. Of Marvel. Exactly, yeah. and they're just arguing like I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. No, you suck. You were always terrible. You know, it's like I love mm-hmm. it. It's so funny. Well, there's another interview later and it's on. Not that was ingest. another radio interview. Yeah, that wasn't where Stan says like, "Look, man, we argue a lot, but like, I'm proud of you, Jack, and you're yeah. you're such a good artist." And Jack's like, "Thanks." <laughs> did they ever reconcile like later in life? We don't know. I don't Jack know, died? man. When did um, Jack that, die? Nineties in the nine nineteen ninety four. Radio well, interview. The animated series was going because that's. There's like a rest in peace to him on like one of the episodes. It's what Spider Man or Superman or Superman or the animated series, like one Superman. of the New Gods episodes. It's like that's right when he died. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I think that radio that interview weird. where Stan actually says like, "I like we're still friends." I think that's kind of like their apology because mm-hmm. that was just a few years before Jack Kirby did die, and it is yeah. Stan saying like admitting it, like we fight all the time, but like yeah. you are you know so what we talented. need though. Like we we need because in culturally only people only think of Stan Lee, you know, yeah. he's the guy that created the Marvel universe. But like we know that it was really Jack and Steve but, and all this. But like the, Stan, I biggest, think is a heavy like he he did yeah. Make well, a it, Stan lot. is incomparable. Like he he was uh like if he didn't exist, obviously the rest of the shit would not exist. Like he mm-hmm. he was necessary there, but a lot yeah. of it was jack and steve and we know this but like general public does not know this we need like the jack kirby movie man I'm, i the, keep the thinking biggest... about the biopic for jack kirby that we're gonna eventually get it, it would be amazing it the, the biggest problem though is that to the general audience stanley's a saint right they yeah. love a hero him. yeah yeah so yeah. you'd have to make him not the villain but at least the antagonist of a jack a kirby human movie. you know because he was an right. entertainer that's his thing i mean the thing about making art is there's always going to be disagreements, right? You look at like Paul McCartney and John Lennon, right? Like they yeah. they, they didn't get along like later along in the Beatles, right? They broke up. Like mm-hmm. there's something about making, you know, art that goes way beyond your years that you guys aren't going to get along. There's two big egos in the in the world, you know, yeah. like and it's hard to make those match and together. It's it's funny because like if you look at the philosophy of of like let's say Stan versus Steve where if you told Steve Ditko that Spider-Man was the biggest fictional character ever, he'd probably fucking hate it. And he'd be like, oh, too many people know about it. It's supposed to be this small little thing. It's supposed to be mine. But Stan was going out there, walking on stage and being like, buy Spider-Man right now. It's the best book you can ever buy, you know? <laughs> and it's like, 
no wonder they hated each other because they all just worked like complete opposite ideologies, you know? Well, mm -hmm. and I kind of wonder if Amazing Fantasy 15 is, is kind of like a play on the, the way they view him. So like when Peter first becomes <clears throat> Spider-Man, he's like, he wants to be in showbiz and he wants to like make yeah. money off of it, right? So that's more of the Stan. Uh, and then Stan, when he gets the yeah. responsibility and he wants to be more isolated, and that's more Dicko. of the Steve Dicko. Like, it's kind of interesting how in, in the very first issue, he's both of them. Like, I think that's you know so what's cool. funny about what I heard about Steve Ditko. I heard this from Tom King, actually. But uh, when Alan Moore was writing Watchmen, Rorschach is obviously based on the question, and the question is created by Steve Ditko. And Rorschach is, like, intentionally making fun of Steve Ditko and everything that Steve Ditko believes in. Like, Rorschach is supposed to be kind of like a you Ditko isk person maybe even steve himself and and like that is so funny that's so <laughs> hilarious because we're all like we're like rorschach's the worst he sucks he's annoying he's, he's an asshole yeah and then we're talking about the guy that made spider-man steve ditko's <laughs> journal <laughs> yeah yeah literally though you know you know what's an interesting thing i always thought about and i read this in one of the jack kirby books um is that jack would never sign a comic on the cover like if you ever find a jack kirby signature it's not on the cover it's on the inside of the book it's on like the first like page i think i did oh, and yeah. he and he said that he never wanted to block the art like he he hated it and obviously stan does the big fucking signature all <laughs> over the art so it's like again like the contrasting like personalities there yeah like, it's interesting. So and, and then even in the way they wrote we're like oh my god how many stories did jack kirby write where it's like there's these random gods that appear and we didn't even know they were there and there's gods among men and all this oh, stuff yeah. and then stan's stan's ideology is like they're just people like they're normal right. people and they have normal issues and like that mixture in itself is kind of awesome where you can have both of those things that exist but also right. again no wonder they argued so much they just believed in completely separate things well they that's probably what makes, that's what makes it so beautiful that because they kind yeah. of contrast like blend in together yeah. Well, they probably argued a lot. I don't know how much Stan had involving the Eternals, but that was Jack Kirby's like first attempt at these gods coming down that have well, always been Marvel around. Least, yeah, yeah, but it, it ended up not being that popular. So he basically tried again at DC with the new gods, and it was way better. But Eternals, I oh yeah, that's my bad. But I wonder <laughs> if to, yeah, I think if, he was gonna build the the uh, new gods in Marvel. He was yeah, like, he definitely can you imagine was. like Dark Side yeah. and, and Mr. Marvel <laughs> yeah. and Marvel. Oh, that'd, be, that'd be fucking cool. I mean, I think they kind of do feel better in DC, and but there's no way to know if they would be better in Marvel because we don't live in that universe. Would Thanos but, like, still exist? They fit no? in. I don't think Thanos would exist. No, because no, that's more of like a maybe you know, like there'd be like parody, a DC yeah. version of Thanos so to contrast like with the mystic history. dark side. Well, that, yeah. Thanos in DC at that point. Yeah. yeah. But I, I more so mean like I wonder if Stan Lee had any involvement of the Eternals eventually like failing. I think he was like, like you know, he, he was like head of Marvel at that point, right? Yeah. He was like uh editor in chief editor or whatever. Chief, yeah, he was a so, chief. But I don't think he was he definitely would not have had like any writing on that book. Oh, that, okay. that was all that was all Stan. Or not yeah, Stan. Uh, uh, oh Jack. God. Jack, there we go. I have these three fucking guys. But yeah, even though Stan like he he took a lot of people's credit and he is more like Peter Parker in the wrestling ring. Yeah. He's still awesome. I still yeah. really like Stan. Well, yeah, you like... read those soapboxes and like he was yeah. definitely ahead of his time. Like not even just like in their characters, but like, you know, society wise and all this stuff. Like he knew exactly what he was doing. Mm -hmm. I think he is a genius. He was a genius. Just like very very yeah. eccentric one and it is not always he's just like putting the speech bubbles in over people's artwork and he's just making the story up as they go like spider-man was his idea have you guys seen yeah. the jack kirby Allegedly. drawing spider-man yeah it's terrible yeah like <laughs> yeah when he, when well, he first it's first it's funny jack because over it. jack's version of spider-man is so terrible because he's and like captain like a, america yeah, shit. <laughs> there's a version of of spider-man that jack kirby draws in like an early avengers issue and it's also like completely garbage but I didn't even realize that the cover to Amazing Fantasy 15 is Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby, yep. So, like, the oh, initial... Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> when people first well, saw Spider-Man, it was Jack Kirby. That's another oh, that's weird thing. Good, yeah. That book, that's that, it's kind of cool when you think of it like that. That book, Amazing Fantasy 15, has Jack, Steve, and Jack, uh, and Stan. God, this They're I cannot get this triumvirate together, names yeah. correctly, but yeah, it has all three of them. But it was just Jack on the cover. He didn't do anything story wise. But yeah, for I guess for the listeners that don't know, when Jack Kirby, when Stan first thought of Spider Man, he got Jack Kirby to draw him. But Jack Kirby drew him like Captain America body type and yeah, like too heroic. Like, 
Yeah, yeah. He had like his chest pushed out and he was very muscular. Square chin. And it looked weird. <laughs> yeah. Very well, weird. But it, an, another one that uh, I think it's the third or fourth appearance of Spider Man is in Strange Tales Annual 2. And that one is it's drawn by Jack Kirby and it's inked oh, and it's inked by uh, uh, Steve Dicko. And Spider Man does not have the logo on his chest. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm gonna find the um, the web to go Avengers down to one. his like hand too. That, that issue is pretty awesome, by the way. It's a it's a human torch and Spider Man team up. It's the first time they meet. Uh, I love that issue. Yeah, they mentioned that in the Spider Man issues. Yeah, there's a. I'm gonna find the early Avengers one, but like, yeah, it it was not Jack's best work <laughs> drawing Spider Man. Like, thank <laughs> God, Steve Ditko drew Spider Man. Well, well, and it's funny in the, in the letter page when the Fantastic Four show up in Spider Man and Steve Ditko draws them, they all shit on Ditko like you should never touch the Fantastic Four. <laughs> Your Fantastic yeah. Four sucks. And then when Fantastic <laughs> so when mean. Spidey shows up in Fantastic Four, they shit on Kirby that he should never draw Spider Man and that he sucks. Little do they know they have the golden age of artists. Like yeah. it'll never get better than this. It it literally will not. Oh God, it's good. It's gonna do that thing, of course. St- uh, Jack Kirby Spider Man is not yeah. good, man. Oh yeah, it is not great. It's, yeah, not it's, as bad. It's the, the eyes movies. are very similar to like the Japanese Spider Man eyes. Yeah, Jeez, he, look he looks so like big because he doesn't do like like. Um, Jack did not do elongated characters and exaggerated proportions. Like he had like three versions of, yeah, but like Mr. Fantastic was still like looked like a guy, you know, like Spider Man was all spindly and whatnot. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, Jack Kirby had like three characters he drew. He drew like, you know, like the leading man who's like as handsome as, you know, the actor at the time, whoever the top, the top male actor in the world was, you know, and mm-hmm. then he had like the bruiser who's him it's ben Grimm. it's all those characters. Or, or the hulk yeah he draws yeah like that and then big, it's like and then just like a woman like he drew every woman looks the same sue, yeah. sue storm looks exactly yeah. like uh, uh janet van dyne and alicia yeah, the and <laughs> yeah. crystal they all look the same in fantastic four <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm looking at so, his yeah. spider-man art and for like the poses of him swinging through the air it's just him like this <laughs> he's doing yeah. like the same thing every time <laughs> He couldn't so draw dynamic poses for Spider-Man, except for that first cover, which is still pretty good for Amazing yeah, Fantasy. I mean, it's still pretty good. That thing is like incredible. Well, you you could you could argue yeah. that Reed and, and Johnny have like the same face here, and that Crystal. Yeah, look at and... yeah, Crystal and Sue, oh, they do. On. Yeah, Sue they have the like face. the same cheekbones. Yeah, yeah. But that page goes so fucking hard. Yeah, I mean, it's Jack Kirby. Like, what can we even say? Jack Kirby. Blonde hair, this... brown hair. It's a little different. Like, if we're... like literally inject it into my veins. Yeah, if we're what? gonna say any, I, if we're gonna make hot takes at all, I and this is not a hot take at all, but Jack Kirby is the best creator in the history of comics i mean we're talking about the guy who's literally called the king you know he's one of the best creators in fiction i would say yeah so in general just... not just comics and, and, when, you, and when you read stories about him too like he was so nice like people would visit his house like comic fans would visit his house in like the 70s and 80s and he would just give away art or he'd draw them something and just hand it to them like free of yeah. charge like can you imagine the killing he would make at a comic con like nowadays he would charge like yeah. oh yeah ten thousand per commission to, people would fucking pay to, it you also have to think that when he when he left marvel and went to dc that is when they first started doing kirby is coming the first time they ever did anything like that and that that though that was monumental. must have been massive wild if you you flip the page and it says jack kirby's gonna come to dc and you're just like <laughs> jack oh kirby's gonna God. what <laughs> sorry i had to, I had to. I had to. <laughs> but but it's true but it would have been a big no, that's deal. true yeah and then and he built and he pre-internet, built internet yeah. like that you found out from that page yeah exactly oh that's true you flip the page and yeah it's yeah like tyler <laughs> when he flips the page and the x-men all get slaughtered yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You would that have would've that been reaction so cool. though, because it's that's insane. He everyone knew who he was. There's no yeah. one like him today. I was trying to think of an there's example. No, but, no one like him today. I mean, there's no one like any of them today, just because the right, characters no are stand. so segmented now. Like, but they created that universe. We have you know? like the modern like kings of comics, where it's like yeah. Tom King or Robert yeah. Kirkman, and but there's Scott no Snyder. Like them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> I think, but Scott Snyder built out a legacy in the 2010s. I think he was like, as far as yes. 2010s creators go, modern comics. I think, I mean, we're going to be looking at the at the repercussions of metal for a long time. <laughs> yeah, if, if we saw like Scott Snyder is coming to Marvel, I'd be like, oh, okay, that's cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what he's all. Yeah, I wonder what he write. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. That'd be uh, it. Iron Man, Iron Man Noir, I think is what he did, or no? Which, yeah, which he, did Noir did he did do that. I think Iron he did Noir, do right? Iron Man Noir. Yeah. 
I mean, I, was I would read an ongoing Iron Man series by him. I probably wouldn't, but I feel like that would fit Scott <laughs> Snyder. Right now, Harper's raging, punching a steering wheel. Like, I just no! thought of that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think Scott Snyder would fit Iron Man well out of every character. But at the same time, yeah. I wouldn't care. Like, Scott Snyder could be put on Thor, and I'd be like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll read yeah, it. There's but, no, yeah. yeah, there's no one that's like Wait, but you're the instantly... Thor yeah, I would read it, but I wouldn't be like, "Oh my God, Scott Snyder." There's, on yeah, Thor. there's no one who's there's no one who's big enough where it's like instantly there on a book you read it. I mean, like Tom, I King, like Tom, Tom King, King, Fantastic yeah. Four. Come on now. Yes, no, I know, yes. but like it's he's Tom King, Mitch Tom, Strahd's Fantastic Four. Tom King Four. would be the first person to tell you that he is not Jack Kirby. You know, yeah. no, 100%. no one is. You he know? doesn't have yeah. that ego. Yeah. Even though no, he loves no, him. no one does. He clearly yeah. loves Jack Kirby. I mean, Mister Miracle is all about how much he loves Jack Kirby. But mm-hmm. I think yeah. I think Jim Lee kind of had that ego and it, rightfully so i mean he has the well book todd that the mcfarlane most had todd that McFarlane definitely has that stan lee <laughs> yeah he's, and, he's and, and, and rob liefeld i would say yeah. Yeah, rob liefeld for sure has that at ego, least but todd, like a negative way <laughs> yeah todd like you said he was he was uh stan lee and jack kirby combined because like he could do the art and he could sell the books you know, right. like he was a big talking person and now he sells toys for billions of dollars a year, you know? Like he is a businessman first. But, and but foremost. if you think about who signed the most issues of all time, it's either gotta be Stan one and McFarlane two or vice versa. Like whenever I look at that's signed books, point. Yeah. always those yeah. two. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Rob, Rob's getting they're, just, there they're too. businessmen. They're and businessmen. Jim Lee it's almost like well, a Stan. Yeah, yeah I, I do really like Todd McFarlane though, and I like his story in general. There's a he's, there's like a mini Canadian, right? Yeah, he he went to high school even, with my mom. I didn't know that. Actually. I don't think I knew that until recently. Would you say he went to high school with my mom? Like he's what? in my mom's high school yearbook picture. I, I knew that. Yeah. Todd yeah. McFarlane. Did she know him crazy. at all or no? No, he was in he was in like grade twelve when she was in like grade ten. And he's probably a comic like book nerd, yeah. and your mom was like, yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Todd like McFarlane could have been your dad. <laughs> what the? I know, right? <laughs> Hunter McFarlane. Come on. Yeah, but like yeah, even then, enough. like Tom, Tom McFarlane does business elsewhere. Like he does toys. He he did a lot of NHL stuff for a while in Canada. Hey, he's so. a sports fan. You know, it's so funny that he's like when he was getting into um, lawsuits with Neil Gaiman, and he's like, I can't pay for this, you know, lawsuit, and he's buying like three thousand dollar, ba- three million dollar baseballs, not three thousand, okay. but like yeah. he's spending millions of dollars on like random things, and he's coming out in public. He's like, I don't have money to spend on like legal <laughs> arrangements. It's like. Todd. I just, I, just, I thought of the idea of Todd, Todd McFarlane as uh, Hunter's dad, and I just picture all like Spawn posters behind him, like King Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn. I'd be yeah. wearing eyeliner like, this right the now. Best. <laughs> yeah, Even you guys wouldn't get is. it. No, but... yeah. Instead of instead of Hunter like growing up reading four hundred issues of Sonic, he actually read three hundred issues of Spawn. Spawn. Probably be a better yeah. person. Oof. if that was the case? <laughs> you think so? You think you'd be a better person? Well, not you'd a be better. Com- <laughs> you'd be in the comic industry at the very least. Yeah, I yeah. would be. I probably right. be working. You'd probably be drawing Spawn by now. Yeah, Tom yeah. You get a you'd just... get a variant cover. Well, Tom McFarlane, his dad goes to like every convention in my area. He doesn't go for some reason because Wasn't I, he the I, one that I... told you to read his Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, but his dad is always like hyping up his son's work, but only cool. his Spider Man stuff. He's just I mean, like, I, you guys know Tom McFarlane? I'm like, yeah, I love Tom McFarlane. I was like, I'm his dad. Have you read Spider Man? <laughs> I mean, if, the, if your son drew Spider Man, like, yeah, the amazing Spider Man, yeah, he'd probably be so proud. Venom, like, would you yeah. not be like, that's my fucking son? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. Yeah, that is my cool. son made the film on a Spider Man PS5. <laughs> This is a great start to the podcast. Well, yeah, no hero story. <laughs> We're talking. What episode again. is this? Two two forty three. Yeah, two forty three. Yeah, I think you're right. Gee, Jesus, two fifty is gonna be big. Will it? I, I have know. an idea for two fifty. If I can make it work. Do you Ooh. want to say it here? Or probably not when recording. No. Okay. Just... It's just like you just like what if we just put the cameras on twenty four hour live stream? Just, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just we just we just when, have Harper. Block. When will two fifty end up being? I'm gonna check, but anyway, assuming no delays happen, uh, two months about two months One, two, in November, December. I guess. Yeah, four, five, six, seven, eight. Assuming no delays, uh, Feb Friday, October twenty seventh. Looks like that will be Halloween two fifty. Oh, okay. We'll um we'll make sure we have Venom on the podcast. It'll be Tony Todd and Tom Hardy. Yes, <laughs> it'll be, awesome. be Tom McFarlane's dad, and the entire time he's just gonna be like, "Read my son Spider Man." 
<laughs> okay, Tommy Farrell's dad, Tom Hardy, and Tony Todd, and then we'll have them all in and be like, "All right, now talk," and we'll all leave. Have a venom <laughs> off. Yeah, <laughs> that would go hard. That would go hard. I'd listen to that. That'd be awesome. And Topher Grace, don't forget Topher Grace. Yeah. yeah oh I yeah. I, I, yeah. I I legitimately forgot and, he existed. <laughs> and Tyler Venom comment expert. Yes, exactly true. Yeah, do we have to address that? <laughs> do we have to address it? Okay, so you said we got a message on the account yesterday that said we should address it. I yeah. went into a comment section yesterday because I was mad about work and I just <laughs> made up nonsense. And I said that Spider Man doing the thwipping pose in the black suit is wrong because Research he should be doing that. this thing yeah. and that that truly and, you know, that means that, <laughs> that Insomniac is destroying Spider Man. Um, and clearly I did not mean it. I said in the comment that it was heavily implied to be the black suit when, as if he's not like, <laughs> literally wearing the symbiote. So I did obviously I did not mean that, but I think it's at like 150 replies now. And there are people that are so, so mad at me and it kind of worked, but also I was like, oh, wow, they, they, they don't get it. Like they think I'm serious. I got so many messages that are like, "Hey man, what are you doing complaining about this? Like leave it alone." I'm like, "Didn't you Bro. say that it was woke because his webs were black?" <laughs> yeah, someone said, "Yeah, someone said like, what does this have to do? Like why is this an issue?" And I said, "You're just falling into in some like woke agenda." And he says, "What does this have to do with a woke <laughs> oh, agenda?" And I just said, "Yeah, they're That's making great. they're making his webs black." <laughs> I think this is what's great about the internet is that like you could like Sometimes you can't read sarcasm, but sometimes yeah. it's so fucking obvious and it still goes right over people's heads. Yeah, people that follow me, I would have thought would get it. Come on, guys. Like on everyone's following you. <laughs> well, the second you said yeah. heavily implied, I would be like, oh yeah, obviously he's joking. Yeah. And I know, like, I never use those emojis. People don't know that. But like, come on. Come on. I was just trying to have a, a bit of fun, guys. I'm sorry. It, it's I'm inspiring. So sorry. It's I, I liked it. It was very yeah. funny. After I saw that, uh, comic book, like the page comic book posted that I Am Groot season two is out now. And I just commented being like, I can't believe they introduced Silver Surfer in this of all shows. <laughs> I got a few replies be like, what? <laughs> so I probably wasted that how many you people's followers days. Hunter, you just like comment shit like that all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because I don't want to post anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler even called me out. He's just like, your post sucked today or something. Well, you posted yesterday. You said, uh, said DC, DC Comics returned today, right? Yeah. So what, that literally is, it wasn't even true. It, it was it was that you took what two months off and you're and you're like you're you're forming I mean, it or you're framing it like it was a return. Yeah, I know, but he was framing it like it was like a sacrifice. Like I took two months off from DC and it's like it's, it's like when COVID happened and they stopped releasing comics and then like yeah. they start releasing them. that's yeah, how he like basically. viewed it. <clears throat> Yeah, but getting an X Men comics, great. Getting post into X Men comics. Hey, that was I thought that was bad. <laughs> yeah. JD, um, when are you reading X Men? Didn't you say you were gonna read X Men? I like this. Comment. Oh my god, do you comment. shut up, pal? <laughs> JD, um, me getting into X Men is complicated, just because like it, like I like to deep dive and like. Didn't you say that so you were going to, to this year? Did you say this year? I don't know if I said this year, but I said that I want to read. I want to start with Claremont. And that's the problem. Yeah. Finland goes on for like 3,000 well, issues. Just like get 18 the Omnis. years. <laughs> I'm sure there's, om I think there's omnibuses that like carry them all. Right. But reading that is going to take like 30 years just because like, yeah. I am Cyclops. Leader it's not going to take 30 years. It, yeah, be, it would take 30 years if you issue. read no, one I, a month. I, I'm good at reading old dialogue. I read 125 issues of Amazing Spider-Man and 125 issues of Fantastic Four from the Silver Age. I can do it. It's just it takes yeah. time. Oh, this so, isn't you know, like <laughs> this isn't that old though. It's a lot more modern than most. But I'm busy right now reading The Punisher. Right. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> great, great, uh, great choice. Punisher. Yeah. <laughs> How is that not a listen? The Punisher is cool. I don't, I don't understand. Where like, did you, you start the from? Netflix show? I started. Yeah, the Netflix show is awesome. I started with War Journal, uh, the Jim Lee What's... stuff. I read. So I don't think I know this, and maybe you will, because I'm sure you've searched it. But what was the Punisher's first solo? Did you read? So I read the one where his family first dies is in a Marvel premiere issue or Marvel preview number two. I read that. Love it was those in black Marvel. and white. Oh, God, dude, the Marvel preview issues are fucking sick. Like, if you ever want to go back and read a sick comic, just pick like go through <laughs> any of them. They Correct. introduce um, Star Lord. They, there's Thor stories in there. They're fucking sick. So I'm not By surprised the way, did that I ever, the Punisher did I ever tell one you is sick. My, uh, 
<laughs> my godfather met John Byrne, and John Byrne was a total fucking asshole to him. He loved the Marvel preview issue of Star Lord, so uh-huh. he met him at a Comic Con. He said, "Hey, can you draw me Star Lord?" And this was like a year after it came out. And he goes, "I don't fucking remember what he looks like. That was over a year ago." And Byrne like blew up. On him. He's like, "Oh, okay, I'll." Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. And then, and then George Press was like, "Superman." George Press was like, "Hey, kid, like, yeah, why don't I draw you like Superman or Spider Man or something?" Yeah, or and he's War- like, oh, I'm, "I'm good," and I'm like. Wait, you turned down a George Perez yeah. original wow. piece? Wow, that's so terrible. From jo- yeah. from John Byrne to George Perez? Yeah. But like, even take it. the two extremes, again, like, yeah. like you know, Punisher. God and the devil, right? Like, <laughs> the devil, John Byrne. Yeah. <laughs> Still love him, though. But so, oh, listen, the best Marvel artist maybe ever. I mean, ever. Besides Kirby, but yeah. I mean, like, all, yeah, all the we post-Silver just... Age. Okay, post-Silver oh, okay. Age. Okay, yeah, we were just talking about how Kirby's Like, when you like, think about a Marvel just... character in your head, you typically think of the Burn version. Like, yeah, at I do, at least. Punisher number one, 1968. 68, dude. That Did is... you read his no, first appearance? No, no way. No, 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 I said 68. I meant, it says 86. I, I, I was about to say, numbers. he first appeared in yeah. uh, 86, Spider-Man. I meant. In 127. <laughs> Writer Stephen Grant. Did you so, read that issue? That's interesting. I, I did. How is it? So it's a it's a mini, right? I mean, it's old. Is he just like an assassin hired to kill Peter? Y- yes. Okay. Oh, 127, right? <laughs> Spider Man. Yeah, and th- he's it's like him and the Jackal in like the same yeah. book. And that oh, van, okay. and then, he's got that Punisher van, right? Yeah, and then he appears like eight issues later again. Like he's the Ninja Turtles. And then yeah, like later, he like actually gets death. So like the Marvel preview establishes that his family was killed. Well, it's because he was a villain, man. Like he was right, introduced he as a, as a bad guy as Spider-Man. He was just the assassin, yeah. Because yeah. he looked really cool. That must have been one of those Batman who laughs things where people were just like, this guy looks sick. And so they made more Well, that cover around. goes so hard. I mean, it's iconic. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I, yeah. The sniper? I, oh, yes, yeah. it does. His, yeah. One of his first appearances was like they... The art looks very it, like for right now today. It looks not the greatest. It looks like a CG character. It's like kind of three D modelish Punisher. Let's see if I can find it actually. But this book sold so much because it looked different from every other mm, comic. They probably just kept selling the Punisher. I learned that when I in another <laughs> life when I interned at Marvel. <laughs> Let's see Punisher cover. But I I have always had Maybe. this thing against the oh, Punisher. So hard. Yeah, insane, insanely cool. But when I was a kid growing up, I hated the Punisher because he's hate, just how could you hate this guy? He shoots a statue of Spider Man. He's sick. just like he's literally me. He's completely the opposite of all of the other Marvel characters. Like this world of Marvels, he is not one of them. You know, he's a murderer, he's a psychopath, he's mean, he's gritty, he's grim. And not that Marvel characters weren't mean or gritty, but he was like next fucking level, obviously, because he killed people nice. and none of the other ones really did. Well, that's super blurry. My camera doesn't really focus. I'm just yeah, saying to you guys. Yeah, Punisher issue. Yeah. I think that's issue one, actually. But yeah, yeah. But th- this cover awesome. sold so much, but a lot of it was because it looks so different from every other cover on the stand. Um, I just Pensler. sent it to you guys. But it's like he, this. He, this he, looks he so real. Pitched, yeah. Like oh, it's oh, it's the uh, like, it's the what's it called? It's the is it yeah the coloring right? Yeah. People were just like, this looks real. What is that's this? Ze- that's Mike Zach too, dude. My, my he went on yeah. and did uh, Kirvin's Last Hunt. And yeah, Secret Wars. And Secret Wars. Wars, yeah. Um, but yeah, I hated the Punisher because he's just like I, I think I have the moment in Civil War burned into my head from when I was a kid where the bad some of the bad guys go to like help captain america out and punisher just guns them down and he's like whatever you know they were bad guys and cap's like you're a fucking crazy person like what is wrong with you (laughs) and when i was a kid i was like yeah like why did you even invite him in there but nowadays i realize like that's the point he's not supposed (laughs) to be one of the heroes you know he says this thing i think it really clicked with me actually recently when i reread zadarsky's daredevil because punisher says like you know, we put our hands into the mud and we fight so that everyone else can have the luxury of weakness. And I'm like, oh, I see what he is now. Like, that's what he views himself as, you know, like he's necessary. He doesn't even really have to like what he does. It's just, it's necessary that he does it. It's, it's cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, but it's, it's neither Batman, than Batman. It's Batman, yeah. but he actually takes care of the situation. He's like, Batman yeah. with yeah. guns. Yeah. Batman with guns. <laughs> but like, yeah. And now we've made but... Batman with guns as well. So, so at, the, at the end of uh, Amazing Spider-Man 127, uh, Jackal sets up Punisher and Spider-Man's like wait you've been set up this isn't your gun and Punisher's like fuck I'm gonna go kill the Jackal he's like I have no war with you and he just leaves 
So, like, he should have. Spider Man just Punisher, lets it happen. If the Punisher had like, killed right. the Jackal, then we would have been saved from so much, guys. There would have been no clones. There would have been no fucking nonsense. If the Punisher had ben just Riley. dealt with business, then we would have been fine. Anyway, he did not. P- Punisher goes, but right now I'm just a warrior fighting a lonely war. And he walks away. And Spider Man goes, something tells me that guy's got problems that make mine look like a birthday party. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> just lets this uh, murderer walk away. Just lets him walk away. But that was guy, he murder he in that God day? Injured. Was he killing like criminals? He had a gun no, and he, he was he, aiming he, at Peter. Yeah, he got hired I mean, to do that. Yeah, he was like Death. He was like Death Row, the Terminator in this issue. But I mean, yeah, he definitely so implied that he killed people before. He's yeah. still a, like a guy with a bunch of guns chasing but, Spider-Man. Uh, so I like War Journal a lot. I mean, the Jim Lee art is great. Like I yes, think that's like peak Jim Lee is eighties, nineties. Yeah, late eighties, earlier nineties. Mm. Like mm. from why, like why you're gonna tell me his new fifty two stuff is better? Yeah. No. Could... It isn't though. It's no, it cleaner. never got better I think I think X-Men. Hush is like peak Jim Lee. Hush might be peak Jim Lee. It's at least like visually, I think maybe peak Batman. I think nineties is a little messy. I don't think Jim Lee's art ever got better than that first X Men issue. Nineties like, well I mean that what first a peak X Men issue. No, that first X Men issue like covers aside. It's a lot of lines. Like it's very. I like messy. the lines. It's good. I like the lines. I like the pouches. It's good. I like the, I, uh, but just I think, all the panels. I like them I playing basketball. Actually, it might be the first page. It's just a close up on Magneto's face. Yeah, and there's like a thousand lines on it. And then there's like, the, and then there's yeah, the next. Like, and, yeah, oof, yeah. So. What is that? Also, that issue where he did. An uncanny X Men where it was the Cap, uh, Natasha, and Wolverine one. Yeah. Oh, the most I think. Iconic. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's such a good yeah. cover. Yeah, yeah. It looks great. No, I don't say it's bad. It's not yeah, bad Jim at Lee's all. Jim always had it. I just think that. But anyway, so that was what attracted me to the Punisher stuff, and the writing's actually like pretty enjoyable too. Like I, I didn't even like Microchip. But he's like the you know guy in the chair. He's a good character. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And, like I kind of like that he's. He's more than like the guy in the chair. Like he actually supports Punisher's agenda. He's like, my son died. Yeah, let's fucking do this. Like I'm with you till the end of the line. I think Micro is really funny. You know, there's a there's a Batman. There's two Batman Punisher crossovers in the '90s, but one of them has a battle uh, over the internet between Micro and Tim Drake. So you might want to look or- into that. Tim and Oracle, <laughs> but I'm gonna read that. No, now. but Tim was like the the computer nerd in the '90s. You know, yeah. like he was because he, he was a kid then, so he was the only I one that knew. Fair. But I think that's so funny. But you know, there's the the other Batman Punisher crossover is John Paul Valley Batman. There's a John Paul Valley oh, Batman Punisher crossover. Yeah, that's so cool. There's so much edge there. There's so yeah, much edge. Yeah, there. you could cut your spikes. yeah. You're gonna cut your fist. Yeah, but <laughs> I think that's kind of awesome though. Like the fact gotta, that we have two crazy both. people. I gotta read both of those now. But I, I don't know. Punisher is like always a character that's been interesting to me that i hate the fans i think the fans are like cringy well, yeah. like you mean, like the, you mean the police <laughs> I, well i mean when they use yeah you know what i mean but like yes. I, I don't know it's just like the the character yeah. himself is kind of interesting and i i kind of in my head he was more of a villain but in these books he's actually kind of the hero i mean yeah he takes it He's the hero far, in his like but... warped way. He's the hero of those very specific stories. But then, but when are there you, like, any times like when out... you're reading like a DC comic or a Marvel comic, like a regular superhero comic, and like they let the bad guy live, and you're just like, fucking kill him. Like, like he does not yeah. deserve to live. Joker, like yeah. killing joke, right? I'm like, fuck, kill this dude. He literally like, yeah. you know, at least took pictures of Barbara naked, probably fucking raped her. Like, yeah. ugh. Yeah. Like, well, that's guy. why it's kind of like the endings implied that Batman does with the whole like. Yeah, hand oh, on the throat yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah but so. like I'm, I don't know. Sometimes, like in superhero comics, like my frustration is like I get it. The character, the villain, has to live, but like they deserve to fucking die. Yeah, I think you can <laughs> kill. So I think like uh, Joker's, you you can't. I understand someone why should can't. at least. Man. But like, who cares? Like, kill kill Professor Pig. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, yeah, yeah that's we've had enough stories with him. Like, Batman doesn't need to do it, but somebody should. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. we had Red, Red Hood for that one. reason, yeah. but he turned face because he looked cool, and that's like the story of these characters. You know, like take a character like Professor Pig, have yeah. Red Hood kill them, and no one's gonna want to write a story where it's the return of Professor Pig. <laughs> yeah. No one's gonna want to write that. So then yeah, it's like an right. actual like masked villain that's appeared hundreds of times gets actually killed. So. Oh, that's what I do. Yeah, but so so that was the attraction to Punisher, and 
you know, like the gun stuff is really cool. Like the end of War Journal, every issue ends with like a detail of his armory. So yeah. they give like, and it's actually like like and real, the van real too, details right? about the gun. Like it actually gives true info. So I, I think oh, it's like, like fun really facts. Cool. <laughs> no, it will though. Like like about like the gun being like lightweight or what it shoots. Like it shoots nine millimeter bullets. I'm like that's fucking awesome. Like someone the did their real research. Details. Yeah. So well, also I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Punisher he usually goes after. A type of criminal that would be in like today's world, like traffickers and Dr- drug dealers, drug dealers, gang yeah. members. He's not and, going yeah, after Green Goblin and Doctor Octopus. Kind of thing. Yeah, like, he's not, going. Yeah, exactly. Not mad. Punisher's like I think supposed to be more real than every other character. Yeah, right. right. And and in a more journal, Daredevil appears, and he kind of just like looks out for Frank. Like at one point, Frank gets shot, and like Daredevil like saves him. And like, they have a good he's just, yeah, he's relationship. Just like, fuck off, Such fuck a off, weird relationship but... the two of those have. Yeah. It is. It's but interesting, though. It's, it's cool. so good every time they're together. <laughs> like, yeah. I uh, He was at the start of Zdarsky's drone, and it was really good how he saves Matt, and then Matt like yeah. wears the Punisher shirt to escape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you might be a you might be a devil, or you might be a demon, but I'm the devil. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah. It's good, it's good, stuff. good stuff. Yeah. But then, yeah, so now I'm on the John Romita stuff, and I'm like, <laughs> okay. The <laughs> Look forehead. at his hairline. Yeah. yeah. Jesus, <laughs> so, but in this one, in this one, Frank's undercover in like the mafia, and like it goes hard. <clears throat> I'm okay. to, are you gonna read Punisher Max? And see, that's what I keep hearing to read. But I don't know. Is it even on Marvel Unlimited? Because no. I know a lot of no, the Max it's stuff is none not of the Marvel, Marvel. None of the Max books are on Marvel Unlimited. And that's but the like, problem. I want to read the Jessica Jones stuff from, too. From what I've read of Punisher Max, it's completely like maybe I think it's just like against what I like in superhero comics. Like I like the heroes to be heroes most of the time and so the punisher oh, brutal i'm pretty sure punisher max opens with him at like a mob funeral and he like busts out of the casket and lights everyone up and i'm just like oh, you don't awesome. know that's who awesome. but like you don't know who in there was really that bad that's you know, awesome. he just he, he just started lighting did. them up he probably but did. i don't i i i don't know man i read the first I three issues of that know. actually doesn't he do that? You right? read the first three issues. Then? Yeah, yeah. Darth Ennis, in man. like it's... 2019 or something, I had someone in in college lend it to me. He's like, "You have to read this." And I read the, he <laughs> the first three, and I was like, "Well, it was dark." There's a part where he drowns a guy in a puddle. He just holds his head in yeah. like with one foot into the That's puddle awesome. and just waits. Oh god, <laughs> I'm the number it's one like Punisher fan now. I Garth think. Ennis, man. Like that was the same time he was writing the boys. I, see, so I was, almost said Warren. Yeah. I almost said Warren Ellis. I always get them confused. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Garth Ennis. I th- I think it was it Garth. Is, en- yeah, is. Garth yeah. Ennis is the really edgy one. Yeah, and yeah, he so he did that. And yeah, and it is edgy. Yeah, at his peak, the John Romita art is hard on my eyes. That's, that doesn't even look like John Romita. There, yeah, that's classic yeah. John Romita. I love that era of John Romita. Like he, when he's doing Daredevil, and I mean Punisher's in his Daredevil issues with Anne Nesenti. And he looks better than that. At least. Frank is like a Dwayne Johnson body. <laughs> yeah, he's. I mean, the, he's got to be though. The Punisher and Daredevil rooftop scene with the chains is that from Punisher or is that from Daredevil? Punisher versus Daredevil okay. or Daredevil versus Punisher or whatever? Like it's it's from that. Okay. Does he? But it's but not good. They've right? met a lot. Wait, it's not real. You said. Is, is it not good? Like I was looking. For <laughs> oh no, that, that that's a good it's one. Not like real? One. No. no, it didn't happen. It's not real. He made it up. <laughs> <laughs> you said it's not. I thought you said it's not real. I was like, well, technically none of the comics. <laughs> what are you real. just mentioned? I just said. Wait, Super, right. Superman's not a real guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not real. I yeah. mean, they did it in the show, yes, but that, that was fiction. <laughs> oh, wait. So Charlie Cox isn't really blind? No. no. Yeah. And John John Bernthal's not really, you know, <laughs> not really a match. Oh, like, dude, hell I, I, mean, I mean, I mean, we don't know. He could have been. He could. Let me tell you something. Man, let me, let me tell, tell you something. something. <laughs> they they gave they gave them a script, but he just threw it out, and then that was actually like Charlie <laughs> Cox true. and John. They were just yelling at yeah. each other. There. Yeah, oh, John Berthenol actually yeah. does want. Oh, you want to talk to me about Santa Claus? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Red. Fucking, fucking <laughs> awesome! What a good episode. That's like the best episode of the whole series. Man, that might be the best like episode. You know the way ahead, like you know the rules. <laughs> God, it goes hard. If we're Marvel, talking about perfect Marvel's casting, here, I did. love how perfect. he 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 tapes the gun to Daredevil's hand to like get yeah. him to shoot, but then. Daredevil doesn't shoot, but then during the hallway fight later, he goes to shoot and realizes there's no bullets. And Char- like Charlie Cox, he just smiles. Well, like, I think that was because he, he knew that. there were no bullets. Yeah, he was trying to scare them. You know, he 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 must have known that there were no bullets in there. I don't know because he, he, he goes to fire and he's click click, and he goes. But, he's dead. <laughs> he's but, but Punisher, as someone with guns, should know that a gun that's loaded and a gun that's not loaded feel very different in weight. Well, I think no, no, Punisher no, it was purposely Daredevil. like I think there's. Punisher, 
one bullet in there, maybe. I don't know. Punisher. Who knows? No, I don't think so. Punisher taped it to Daredevil's hand saying, like, you yeah. shoot me or shoot yourself. And Daredevil or refused. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah or I'll Daredevil kill Grotto. Refused. But then Punisher was just like, he was he was just saying that, really. There was no bullets in it in the end. He was just making fun of Daredevil, essentially, because he knew Daredevil wouldn't do it. Yeah. So he just did it to, like, uh, yell yeah. at him. That's true. Yeah. That cool. Listen, I, wa- I want to be well informed on the Punisher. I, before this, I looked on Comic Geeks. I had read 50 appearances ever. And like they're probably a lot of background. All right, now we're checking. We're we're both checking. We, both, we both went to check. I only read fifty. That's like nothing. Or it'd be like five hundred. I, I, I imagine Tyler's way higher. Obviously, just being a Marvel guy. I don't the know, Punisher, I... maybe. I mean, like I told you though, there was a long time in my history where I just I you did not yeah. seek out anything Punisher. I've pun- recently like I read the Jason Aaron Punisher, and I actually think that stuff is pretty cool. Like it's, I don't like the logo. It, it's very different. You know, yeah. he's the leader of the hand, but I yeah. think it's pretty cool. Uh, I've, I'm looking for Punisher right now. Uh, Shazam's now called Captain on here, like officially. Oh, o- old yuck. old news. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Shazam. <laughs> I or uh, not Shazam. The Punisher. I can't. I. I mean, I don't know. It took me a while to find him. I had to scroll really far. If you're around like 50, my 250th rank guy. If you were around that, then I'm probably around that too. I think most of what we. Oh, here we go. I found close. Punisher. 140. He's number 143 for me. 105. Okay. He's right under ha- Wonder I Girl. You. I have more Cassie Sandsmark than I have the Punisher. That's interesting. Damn, you guys. I, you, yeah, I had so many fast. stupid ones around the Punisher that were like more than him. I'm like, good God. I wish there was a yeah. search option. Yeah, yeah that, that would be. be I have more oh, old man it, Logan it. than the <laughs> Number Punisher. 244 for me. I have 55. <laughs> appearance oh so i was a like little bit ahead of him yeah I was at 50. it's right underneath hulkling <laughs> <laughs> i've written more hulkling <laughs> yeah see he w- he was behind uh jack drake that's tim drake's dad tim drake's dad yeah <laughs> that, that gets killed with a boomerang it's awesome <laughs> he was also behind joan garrick uh jay garrick's wife <laughs> jesus oh i forgot I, 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 I sure it was war machine at one point that kind of fits him like, and there's yeah, he also was. Uh, that was Helen Claiborne, died. who's Max Mercury's daughter, who's only appeared in Impulse Issues, was and he's still more than the Castle. Punisher. Jesus, yeah. reminds him between Hulkling and Shadow Cat, which is Kitty Pride. Which I guess yeah. that'll pass pretty quickly. So then it'll be Jarvis, <laughs> like Edwin Jarvis. So that's why I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted yeah, to mine is in up. between Wonder Girls on on yeah, above him, and then uh, Two Faces below him. So. Okay. I, Two DC characters. Yeah, pretty much. Enough about what I'm reading. What are you guys reading? What have you been reading? Do we have um, news? Is there any news this week? There was the, the only right? news. Well, because the strike's happening, there's like a lot of rumors, but I don't believe any of them. Uh, because there's a strike happening. So how are there rumors about yeah, where it's happening? Coming out from yeah. So, but uh, the only news is the Loki season two got another trailer. That's it. Did it? Yep. When? Which I watched, and I don't can't really. It just did it. I don't even know this. All right. Yeah, there's no like reveals I, I or anything. It. I don't know. There's I no reveals. It. It's I don't just, even remember though. It's the first trailer with a few of the other scenes in it. I keep getting the McDonald's ad where Loki and Sylvia are in it. I, I keep getting that, but that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It shows that again in the trailer. They're really hyping that up. Yeah, they because they really want to do like the she, the Szechuan sauce thing. They want us to go to McDonald's to get the Loki sauce or whatever. They have a thing that's like says Loki on it. I'm not going to do that. Are you going to get the Loki <laughs> sauce? No, I, I might get the Loki sauce. I might get the Loki sauce. <laughs> <laughs> just to yeah, have so... it, just as like a collector's item, I'll sell it on eBay. But that is You're the only going to open it? Ew. Yeah. I do want to talk comics that came out this week. But yeah, I'm, yeah, I've just been reading X-Men. I finished my Fractions run and uh, you're, you're Second Coming. back to the X-Men because you took a little break. I did take a two-month break, but I'm back. And Second I... Coming's good, man. Like it's it for, Okay, for X-Men, I, I took a break because I'm like, I finished... Um, Who was before... Who's there for Fraction yeah. Run? Is it Brewbreaker? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, well, I finished Fraction. Yeah, Brewbreaker. Yeah, I finished Fractions his run. when they moved to California. Utopia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, they moved to the Utopia and then, but California at the start. Yeah. Brewbreaker's yeah. run, I thought was okay. I didn't really like it. Fraction Run. I like is it because so it's good. space shit. And it it's is like space a bunch stuff. Of and I don't. Shi'ar. And I love the Shi'ar. I know you I have care. nothing for the Shi'ar. I, I love Calark. I love Il- Il- Ilandra. I love them all, man. I really think I like Ilandra, I think they're a lot of fun. I, yeah. I like Charles's relationship with them. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. It. But uh, like Fractions run was so good because Fraction got like a small team again, and he focused on that team. Yeah, and that's what I, I like. For you, though. Yeah, 
Uh, thoughts on Greg Land? <laughs> oh God! Why? <laughs> What? I was gonna say, how could you even like that run when it's Terry, got Greg Land yeah. art all over it? Because no, no, it's half Terry of it. Dodson. Terry know, Dodson still. is most of it. Greg Land is the fill-in artist. He does like he does a good. He do three issues. Good amount, man. He do three issues, and then Terry will do six, and then he will do three, and then Terry it was will do still six. a lot, man. And him it, drawing Pixie it is and like, him drawing Emma. It was 40, just disgusting. I think it's like forty nine issues or something. Like my fashion run was long. Like it's especially if you put in Second Coming with that. But um, why does he draw like? <laughs> why we know exactly why he draws like that. He traces. Yeah, he does trace he traces, he traces porn stars he? and yeah. stuff like that. Is that confirmed? Star and and yeah. yes, well, I mean, people have found could... the reference images and stuff. That being said, though, there's this Jack Kirby piece that the Jack Kirby account posts where he oh, with the invisible like, woman like, like this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think using references is fine for like sometimes an anatomy. All right, tough. tracer. All right, tracer. Y- yeah, uh, more more uh, like. Comic book tracer, am I no, right? No, no, I can explain. Tracer. No, using as a reference, like to the side, I think that's fine if you're doing it. Yeah, I like when Paolo Rivera posts those where he's just like, like doing this or something, helps him get the anatomy right. But Greg Land will literally trace the image, and, and like it's the person's obvious facial too. Yeah, he yeah. Still gets, because he still gets work though, doesn't he? It's because he just. I think it's just because he like. Uh, yeah, what uh, a predator! What a fucking waste to finally get Wolverine versus Predator, which is a book that like obviously you should do that and not get like a good artist on it, you know. And they have it's uh, so terrible. They have Marco Cinchetto doing the covers. Cover, yeah, he should be drawing that fucking book. <laughs> wow, yeah, wow, what a cock tease. Like a cock imagine, tease. or or like Steve McNiven when he did, you know, Old Man Logan and Civil War and stuff like that. Like, and why is he not doing it? Why are we getting Greg Land? Land? Oh my god! But I don't like. Yeah, Why it's did not just, sell me a book. Greg Land. I mean, like, I couldn't find anything that was good about it. the The story was good though. That's what kept me going. I really <laughs> yes. like the story. Yeah, but yeah, why? Pixie, I do like Utopia. Yeah, Utopia is cool. It, it seems like it doesn't last that long because I'm like almost at Avengers vs X Men here. Because yeah, I'm well, reading. That's when, uh, that's when it goes the well, right now. It does it go away? In, I think that that's when it does go away in Avengers vs. X Men because then Cyclops gets arrested for killing Charles and he, and he goes Phoenix, crazy. Yeah, he yeah. like burns the whole place down. So. And then he goes insane and becomes a terrorist, which I love. Which yeah, I'm looking, to, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to Bendis. Bendis. Is Bendis X Men good? I keep hearing it's not that good. I, I mean, I like it, man. I don't, I really don't care what people say. I like his version of Scott because his version of Scott is like, a version of Scott that's so lore heavy, like character development wise, he's gotten to a point where he's like, maybe Magneto was right. You know, he's gone through all the development to be like, maybe Charles was wrong, and then this is how we have to fight. Well, this you know? started like, that's in fractions. Kind of really, yeah, I think that's well. It's it's like a tr- it's like a one long arc. Probably like I think Grant Morrison planted the seeds because Magneto really saves off. Kitty. Which is such a good scene. My it God. Just pull, pulls her with the Yo, bullet. That, that, the bullet. He's the strongest character of Marvel. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. That's a bunch of ridiculous. I, that I don't is buy ridiculous. that. That is ridiculous. I don't so buy stupid. that. Yeah. For everyone that's listening and doesn't know, in um giant sized astonishing X Men, it's the last Which issue is so of good. Joss Whedon's run. There's a, a <laughs> there's a planet that sends a big bullet at Earth. Right, just a big giant bullet. It's like the size I of a building. It's yeah, it's no, it's like the size of like Manhattan Island. It's gigantic, right? Mm-hmm. And Kitty Pride is inside of it, and she's like, I don't know what to do. So she phases the bullet through the earth, earth. <laughs> but she's stuck in it, and so it's flying through space, and she's just gone. And we write Kitty Pride out of the book, and then when she's reintroduced, which Magneto's is Magneto's like, which is like, I think six years later or something. Yeah, like Magneto's that. like, eh, I was keeping tabs on that bullet and like mentally in my head the whole time. And he just, he just pulls it back from wherever it was in space. Like light years away in space. <laughs> yeah. Because he, he, well, he, he wasn't keeping tabs. He, he was with the high evolutionary at one point. Oh, yeah, Herbert. And they, they saw the bullet and Magneto <laughs> yeah. was like, the hell is that? And how I was sure he's like, oh yeah, there's like a mutant named Kitty Pride in that, but you know, it's whatever. So maybe yeah, he was whatever. Like, oh, okay. So he kept tabs on it. Yeah. And then he just yeah. he brought it took it, it took a day. So maybe But it's like, still that's still an insane amount of space. But he didn't tell anyone he was doing it too. He climbed a yeah. mountain and in Utopia, which is a very small island. 
and he started like meditating and trying to bring it back and then emma and scott found him it's like what's magneto doing why is he like why is he sweating and bleeding it's like he's nose? plotting something yeah, yeah. like hello you you hear us and he just he's just focusing on bringing kitty back but he's, he didn't tell anyone and then yeah beast finds out that the kitty's bullet is turned around it's heading straight for earth so everyone's like oh god the world's gonna panic because there's a bullet <laughs> heading for earth and magneto didn't tell anybody but yeah yeah it's a, it's, it's a like really a, good it's book. a big bargaining chip though right he's like i'm gonna join the x-men now kind yeah, of yeah it's like look yeah. i saved your friend kind of thing yeah, yeah. but it's yeah. tough it's really good. It is the Avengers but... had the like marketing and they had the place, but the X Men were also going through good stuff in the two thousands. Like it was all Avengers all day at that point in Marvel, but they're still good X Men stories. I'm enjoying. Like, they're still it, yeah. they're still doing their thing, you know. I, I do I'm really trying, like I'm it. Yeah, I, I've been really enjoying X Men in general. So I want JD to get into it. I know it'll it'll take some time, but. I mean, once I get into it, then I'll probably be like, "Oh man, this is fucking great." What was I waiting for? But it's yeah, really that's gonna yeah, yeah, that will be a stop. long time. Are you gonna literally read it all though? I mean, you can't read it all. Like, it's impossible. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can't. I mean, no, because like, there's also even Claremont. Like Claremont also... spins off into X Factor and Excalibur right. I, I, I and like the Mutants. Claremont, like at I, least the, through, I bought like... the first issue of Excalibur. Like I found it too. Like I'm if I could do definitely. giant size through like I don't know Dark Phoenix or like. Um, Days of Future's Past. Days of that's Future not that past. many, though. That's like, like 30, 40 happy. issues. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that. like 50 issues. And then issues. I can move on to, like, Morrison <laughs> and Whedon. That's what I did, yeah. And feel comfortable. Yeah. Excalibur. That's exactly and what so I that's did. another Claremont book, which is really cool. Man. I, I did I did from Giant Size to Days of Future's Past, and then Morrison, just, too. Just and I'm just I'm just trying to get to today. Though I am, I've been told many by many people to read the 2000s X, X Factor run. Forget yeah. who writes it, but he wrote Peter it for Peter like... David. Peter David, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's investigation. Like, That's it's the one like with a, Jamie oh, Madrox. Ten year run. <laughs> well, he Are wrote you... he wrote X he he wrote X Factor, I think back in the nineties, and then and then he rebooted them again in that after House of M. And that's he just really likes Multiple Man. Like Peter David loves. God, Man. I saw the scene with Multiple Man's the kid. baby. Yeah. God, JD, have you heard of this? No, I want I want to say for the audience. So Multiple Man. Has a son, she he he, and he's like really. It cool. was, he's well, he's about was, to have a son. It was a a duplicate of him. One of his like multiple men has sex with a woman and she gets pregnant. Yeah, and the thing that multiple men work, works is he he gets a duplicate of himself, and then when they're done doing their thing, so he can do yeah. everything at once, and they all absorb back together. And when person. he absorbs them, he like gains their memories, memories and everything. So right. yeah, so, so like he. He's sent people off and like learned martial arts and they'll be gone for six years and they'll come back and he knows like Kung Fu or whatever. Uh, that's cool. Just, just from being absorbed. Yeah. yeah. Or sometimes his duplicates will like, they'll go to like a bar and then they'll come back and yeah. they'll be a little intoxicated for a little bit kind of thing. Yeah, or they'll go rogue and they'll just disappear and they'll turn evil sometimes. Like, and then he has they're... to find them. But all he has to do is touch them and then they're back. Yeah. Kind of thing. So, so that's how it works. But anyways, his duplicate has a, has a kid on the way. And then goes and he absorbs and the most ones like, oh my god, I have a I have a kid on the way now because one yeah. of my duplicates Fuck. did this. I didn't, yeah. yeah I didn't but he starts to get excited and he starts to be like, I'm gonna be a good dad. Anyways, kid gets born. Uh, you know, the mother holds it and gives it to the father multiple man, and as multiple man holds it, he absorbs the baby. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> it's a duplicate of him. <laughs> Yeah, and you yeah. can never they can never come back. And and he can't like he can't like stop himself from doing it. It is his superpower, you know. Oh and so yeah. yeah, and it's like this horrible scene where he's like, I can't stop. I can't I can't stop it from happening. Yeah. It's awesome. It's Brutal. It's really, yeah, yeah. It's really awesome. Absolutely terrifying. Yeah, just <laughs> absolutely and then at the, and then just depression. Like the rest yeah. of that book oh, after yeah. that point, just sadness, man. That's and we're already like... living in the house of m era where there's no new mutants born there's no nothing and it's it's all that was depression be like maybe the and first then, one and it technically and was the first all one. depression yeah uh, i love that it's good stuff though it's, yeah, you love it <laughs> it's fun it's like it, it's it's not fun it's, air quotes it's but it's good writing yeah it's interesting i wasn't expecting that you know i would not yeah. have expected that that is brutal i read the yeah. multiple Men miniseries and it was enjoyable but Multiple Man is one of those characters where I think if they gave him like a suitable push, like if they were like, let's make Multiple Man the face of the X Men right now, like he could be <laughs> a big character. Like I think if you find the perfect casting for that character in a movie, he's like he would blow up like Iron Man. I, I really believe that. 
Really? Like Iron I, I do. Man. Like Iron, Iron Man, Man. yeah. No. I do believe that. I no, I think so. I really think like you find the audience for that character. That audience exists. They just don't know it yet. Tom and Cruise. once they're shown, Tom Cruise, do you think he should play multiple man or do you think he's the perfect audience for a multiple man? Both. <laughs> yeah, probably. He loved the flash, so yeah. he'd love anything. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> What are you Those reading? Popcorn. Tyler. Uh, I read a lot of books. Um, well, the first okay, the first thing I read, I guess, was um Catwoman by Brubaker Brew and Darwin Cook. I don't know why I didn't pull it, but I have the book. It's in my in the my bookshelf. Yeah. Um, and it it had on the cover it said perfect for fans of Batman or perfect for fans of crime noir. And I was like, oh. I'm both of those things. I'll read this. And it's also Darwin Cook, and he's the goat. And it's also Ed Brubaker, and he's the goat. And, I mean, Ed Brubaker writing while Darwin Cook draws. I mean, come the fuck on. That's Stan Lee and Jack Kirby right there, bro. And so I read that, and it was fucking awesome. And I, the reason my name is Slam Bradley right now is because Slam Bradley is a character who I've recently fallen in love with. I found out that... You know how Batman is introduced in Detective 27? Yeah. Slam Bradley is the detective of Detective Comics. He was the guy they introduced in Detective Comics issue one. Oh, he's, shit. He, yeah, it's him. It's Slam Bradley. <laughs> it's the first <laughs> so, awesome. Yeah, I didn't even know that. Uh, I found that out because he's also the protagonist of Gotham City year one, which was the Tom King book I read. Uh, I mean, okay. I read that a couple weeks ago, but I found out that Slam Bradley is now one of my favorite characters, um, <laughs> and it was really good. It was it was really really good actually. Have either of you read <laughs> Selena's? Oh, what is it called? It's big Selena's score? big score. Yeah, yeah. The Darwin yeah. Cook written have, and yeah. drawn one. It, yeah, because that's in the it's ego. ego trade. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ego and other tales. Yeah, <clears throat> that's a really cool book, which it also good, yeah. obviously has Slam Bradley in it. But then we go like one through seven, I think, of the issues of Catwoman that's in that trade. And they were really cool. I don't know. I, I, I recently realized like, I don't know why I realized this, but I was like, I like Catwoman. Like, I think she works in that universe as, as a character in his mythos. And so, yeah, I thought it was good. Uh, so I brought a, I read a lot of books, though. I read this book. This is a Brubaker book, actually. So it's called Pulp. I read it because... Um, you just keep going. Someone just rang my doorbell. Oh, he's getting ding dong oh, no. <laughs> uh, that, That's one of the it's many the, uh, Sean Phillips, Ed Brubaker. Yeah, so else. I read this book um, because I thought it was going to be like like something else that it wasn't. Is it like a Western but, cowboy? So it says in the in the description, it's not on the blurb, but it said like uh, he's, you know, Western cowboy and he's fighting in Nazis and stuff like that. And I'm like, is it like pulp? Does that mean it's just like every pulp thing so it's like the cowboy and the and the spy and all that like is it doing all this stuff it's not it's just doing cowboy stuff but the basic premise of this book which i think is really interesting and i think you'd actually think like it could kind of convince you to read it but basically there's a he's a writer the main character is a writer from in the 1930s in new york and he's a writer of comic books and he writes about this character who was like a cowboy uh, read something i forget the the character's name but the twist is that he's not writing these stories these are things he did he's living and he's actually like he was that character yes, and yes. he's just telling like biographical stories but like through the lens of a comic book and That's pretending cool. that they're fictional stories um and he's getting screwed over by the publishers and they're like there's a part where he goes in to start writing and someone else is writing the comics like the the you know the publisher is like hey we have this other guy to fill in some stories for you and he's like you're getting someone else to write red and he's really pissed because it's it's him it's, it's his stories life, yeah. yeah and it's it's really cool it's really good uh it's short it's you know thin it's like 64 pages or whatever but oh, is it, it's got is it this, only the one book yeah yeah it's just this one book but it's got the That's eisner right. thing one in eisner so yeah good book yeah i have that on the list after criminal but i want to read all yeah the i Baker, i've been books. thinking about that too i mean i was just like diving deep into actually it's in this book all the all the ed Baker and sean phillips ones but there's criminal killer be killed fatal you know um the fade out is another one. Reckless. The fade out I read. Cruel Summer. I think I also read the fade out. I I, I don't remember it much. I though. read it on Comicsology Unlimited. It was pretty but, good. 
There's all your Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips books, right? Just yeah, so I, <laughs> a million comics, right? So I own um, the first three trades to Criminal. I'm thinking October, I want to do all indie books, like no DC, no Marvel. Yeah, that's what I've been doing recently, actually. Um, yeah, I'm trying to expand my horizons. I think I want to, I've read, it's not, it's not Brubaker and Phillips. It's Brubaker and I want to say Sean, I'm not Sean, something, Steve Epting, who did. Okay. Captain America. Uh, Captain America, yeah. They did yeah. Velvet. And I thought Velvet was yeah, really that's cool. Velvet's one. spy book or whatever. And I love, you know, I love spy books. Ed Brubaker does the genre of books that I love. He does spy books, he does noir books, and he does them the best that they can possibly be done. So why would I not read an Ed Brubaker book? So I think I'm gonna also try to make my way through at least like as many as I want to. Or as yeah, I can, I mean, you know. Just do the deep dive into Ed Brubaker. I mean, the trades yeah. are usually pretty cheap too. Coward, Law. I'm just looking at all the criminal books. Yeah, a Fatal looks really cool too. I, yeah, I think I I'm gonna I try Coward, Layless, and The Dead and the Dying. Talking about Brew Baker books, I read this called Pulp. Jesus, it's a cowboy Pulp. book. Is there someone uh, kind of? Yeah, it's really good. I liked it. Okay. Um, the other, uh, one of the other ones I read. I mean, I, I've been talking about this one though. Do a Power Bomb, Danny Warren Johnson. Oh this yeah, one, that looks so one, cool. This one, what did it win at the Eisner's a couple weeks ago? Best, best art, best right? artist, best something. It won an Eisner, like very best penciler, recently. best penciler, I believe. Danny Warren Johnson. For, I mean, it's the same guy for, who did the Beta Ray Bill and the Beta Ray Wonder Bill, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman, Dead Earth, uh, Jurassic League, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. and he's doing Jurassic Transformers, which is I'm I can't fucking wait for Transformers, man. I, it's I, I think my I'll most be reading it too. Book yeah. of the rest of the year. I think I'll be reading. Are you reading it too, Hunter? I'm, yeah, and also Joshua Williamson's Duke. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna read reading Duke too. I'm gonna read that whole Energon universe. I'm just I'm into it. I think I think I will too. Snake Eyes, I, like oh, I'm in. I'm I'm just Daniel Warren Johnson on anything is enough to sell me on the book now. Like his he's, he's got such me. a cool style. Yeah, yeah, his style is so energetic. So the thing about this book, it's obviously about pro wrestling, and I love pro wrestling. But the reason that I really like this book, um is because it puts a whole new perspective on it that like you don't think about if you were just watching it because so let's say like th this is one of the early panels right it's that and it's you know the perspective is so cool moonsault from the top rope to the outside and like god there's like I, momentum to it yeah what i realized in this panel like when you're watching wrestling when you're watching it on screen you don't get to pause and just stare at the shot you know it's happening it's frantic i mean you but, could like, you could, but why would you? You know, it's a live, it's a live show. Yeah, yeah. But like in a comic book, it's selected moments, you know, and so you get to really like feel the energy just from like panels and moments. And so like when I saw that, which is, you know, a thing again, I'll show you again. But it's a thing I've seen in wrestling a million times. You know, they jump from the top rope, but like I never get to see it frozen. You know, like like memorialized or immortalized in one moment it's fucking sick you know it's a whole new <laughs> perspective on 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 this art form um the basic premise of this book <laughs> is that um there's this girl who wants to be a wrestler because her mom was a wrestler and her <laughs> she okay she gets recruited by an alien god kind of god demon guy let's just say he's mephisto he's kind of just mephisto who loves professional wrestling this guy he loves pro wrestling and he's building a tournament of the best pro wrestlers in the entire universe and he goes to earth and he doesn't know that earth pro wrestling is staged he thinks it's real he thinks they're beating the shit out of each other and they're fighting to the death so he sends two humans into this battle where like there's aliens and shit who in their pro wrestling are actually fighting to kill each other. And so okay. <laughs> there's like orangutans and, and shit like that, like aliens. It's fucking awesome. And I don't, I don't think this is much of a spoiler, but near the end of the book, and I just thought this was so funny at the end of the book, they wrestle God. And it's not like, it's not, <laughs> they're not being funny about it. He's, he's God. Like he's the he's the one above all. He's he's literally God, like actual God, the guy that created the universe, God. And the way that he speaks and the way that he everything he speaks, he's just a wrestler. He's like an 80s pro wrestler. 
and the way they call his like his shots they say like you know they had the commentary in here it's like a huge belly to belly suplex by the architect of creation you know it's like it's he's <laughs> a god you know they're just giving him yeah. god's nicknames he's literally god i thought it was hilarious like it's so fucking funny they're just they're wrestling like actual god you know <laughs> he's got a move that's called the crucifix and he's fucking them up he's it's awesome it's just awesome like it's really just an awesome book, i definitely want know? to read it I'm, I'm not into wrestling but daniel warren johnson like beta ray yeah. bill by him is still one of my favorite comics ever made yeah. and series. beta ray bill has a lot of wrestling like moves in it like it he, does he, yeah he's always throwing wrestling moves into his comics and so him <laughs> just doing Surfer, a wrestling book, yeah yeah he when fights he, fights Surfer, Surfer, he, he just does like a grapples Kenny around move. yeah yeah it's uh, great and his origin story is in here too he talks about how he got into wrestling which oh, is interesting yeah it's interesting because he got into wrestling as an adult so there was never like a version of it where he thought it was weird. real like that's a story that a lot of kids that get into wrestling is you know Did we you think, think it's it real, real we're like of course i thought it was real like the undertaker's a zombie what <laughs> it's fucking awesome you know how does he control the lightning that's sick yeah, I did think it was real, but I think it's interesting that he never thought it was real, and he fucking loves it. it like, still loves you know, it. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's, it's fake, it's but they're still form, you know? they're still tackling each other. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a performance, yeah. and I, yeah, it's awesome. It's really cool. The pillars of Golgotha. It's a move that by God. It's just it's really it's the really art's good. so cool. I want him on a yeah. Ninja Turtles story. Ninja. Oh, that would be good. Yeah, even yeah. just the cover, like the cover is an incredible page, panel, whatever, you know? Yeah. Just you want to stare at it, you know? Yeah. That's one of the, like the fucking God, face. he's so good at like he like obviously it's art, but it looks like it's moving kind of thing. Like there's so no, much it's, motion. I mean, look at this, it. right? It's just people scaling up the ladder. I mean, like you can see the motion. Yeah. He's getting hit by the chair. She's got fucking whacked in the face. Even then, the ladder's like the ladder's like tilting to the side. Yeah, yeah. He's he's a he's a master at it. He's He's so good. He's gonna nail it on Transformers. (laughs) Yeah, man. Are you gonna read any Energon stuff, JD? I I didn't even know about this. This is Robert Kirkman's reboot of the Star of the Star Wars of the Transformers um, GI Joe shared universe. So. They're going to launch with Transformers by Danny Warren Johnson, and then there's going to be a Duke book by uh, Joshua Duke Williamson. from uh, G.I. Joe. from Yeah, Joshua Williamson. And then they're going to launch into G.I. Joe stuff. What, and then what eventually, is, is Duke? Duke, Duke is, the, is main, the, like, like, the main blonde guy, guy G. from G.I. Joe. G. I. Joe. Oh, I've, I've like never yeah. done any G.I. Joe. Like and so well, that's okay, they're yeah. going to they're gonna launch this new universe though that is the gi joe transformers universe it's and quite, but it's, it's got like superstar creators behind it like and, it's, and you guys it's, are trying it's, to keep up with like the whole universe it's, well, it's they, they're doing starting short books yeah and they said they will do more but the gi joe ones are many series right now so in those ends they'll launch more and they even say they want to just do hasbro property so like the, they might bring like the power rangers in for example yeah oh my god so, oh my god dude yeah yeah that would be fucking crazy and, and it's then all... dan mora has shown a lot of interest in that <laughs> well dan mora's done power rangers he's done yeah, covers exactly. and stuff yeah yeah but, but dan mora on transformers bro <laughs> At least doing covers, yeah. but yeah, like it's it just it's a new universe, and it's Robert Kirkman, and he's like the yeah, one planning it. Star all. Skybound or whatever. Yeah. Oh, it's on, it's in the Skybound imprint. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but it's all yeah, tr- it's I mean, a reboot. I trust so. it. I trust all those creative names of my life. You know. Yeah, I believe yeah. the first issue is just like it's Robert Kirkman and Daniel Warren Johnson just showing like Transformers their landing on Earth, like it's starting it's, at the it's, beginning. It's, I think it's next month. I think it's October. Yeah, so. and like the Cobra Commander from GI Joe is the yeah. first person that notices this. So. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, just Transformers cool. by Daniel Warren Johnson. The way he drew Optimus, and 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 the way he sold it with there will be suplexes. I'm just like, of course, I'm going to read this book. This, yeah, this is fucking awesome. I want this so bad. Uh, I'm um, excited. I, I I've been working for GI Joe essentially for the past year. So yeah. have you I've, grown to like it at all? I have, yeah. I definitely <laughs> I have. Like I mean, I, I stare I stare at Snake Eyes Monday to Friday. <laughs> so, I like Joe. I yeah, I, I have at first like I didn't care, but this past year I that's been my job is G.I. Joe stuff. So I, I really do enjoy them now. I know I think I know a lot about the universe now. So I have a lot of respect and I'm glad the comics are coming oh, back. Bra- 
I love yeah. Cobra Commander. He's Cobra so Commander, good. He looks so dumb, but I'm excited for him. Well, he is. He is dumb. He's like Starscream. If if Star Cream, Star Cream, what Star Cream? I just said Star Starscream. That would like that, be one of your Zoom names. Star Cream. Oh, yuck. I heard the vine boom when he said, "Yeah." That. <laughs> uh, you saw the rocks eyebrow go up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's like if Starscream was the leader of the Decepticons. That's literally what Co- yeah, Cobra yeah, Commander that, is, which is why they fit together well. But I, it's like I, I love Snake Eyes, man. I love him so much. He's cool. He's, he's just a ninja. He's just he's a cool such ninja a guy. Cool character. I, I like him yeah. so did much. Did you see that Snake Eyes movie? Snake Eyes GI Joe. I Origins? did. I did. Me too. Like it. <laughs> it's all right. It's not great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's got its moments. I like They've the never snake. nailed it with GI Joe on screen, and and I mean. They're threatening to with the way that that new Transformers movie ended, you know? Yeah. <laughs> which was which... fucking stupid. Okay. So, uh, like, my job for, for listeners that don't know is I'm making Gal- I'm making Disneyland, but Hasbro. <laughs> I'm, like, designing it all with some people. Is it going to be in Canada, by the way? Yeah, it is in Canada. Shit. Oh, yeah. So, go. yeah. It's so our no only... one will ever visit it. No <laughs> one but me. <laughs> yeah. But, but like, we are, we are basically Venom. working with G.I. Joe and Transformers every day. And then, so I see the new Transformers movie, and spoiler alert, I guess for for a very mid Transformers movie, but yeah, it ends with them saying that they're crossing over GI Joe, which is like my job every day. I'm like, <laughs> so like my jaw drops. Well, I just, I just, I was when I saw that movie, I was sitting in a theater, and it's a guy in a suit that leads the main character into like a a business room. There's no one else in there. And I'm like, something fishy's going on here. But it's not well, like it's the, they'll do the, the GI Joe. It's like the end credits, essentially. But it is the ending. It's not even They're the definitely end It's just like actually. The, yeah, I'm like, this can't. they can't do the GI Joe thing now. Like, they can't pull the trigger on this now, can they? And then he's like, we want to recruit you for GI Joe. And I'm like, I, I said out loud, get the fuck out of here. Like, there's <laughs> no way. Because, like, not only is that a crazy thing to reveal, there's no fucking way we're getting that movie. They're not going to make are. that. I think we no, are. But, th- but I just, I don't buy it. I think that, like, they never make it. They never, this is like. They've been talking about it since so, like 2008. This is so desperate. You know, this is such a, a, a desperation plea of two dead franchises going, please, please see the next one because <laughs> Snake Eyes will team up with Optimus Prime. Yeah, they're going to have Optimus Prime, like, <laughs> like Cannonball Snake Eyes. <laughs> like, yeah. Like he's Which is cool. I mean, guys it's cool, them, like, but Decepticon. <laughs> I don't. I, I. I don't know. I don't see the audience for that in twenty twenty whatever when they make it. You know, it'll be that would have been. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been a big movie forty years ago. I mean, I'm gonna see it. There's, I'm not. I'm not gonna not see that movie. I'm just saying I don't think they're gonna make that movie. Yeah, that's. I mean, we both saw Blue Beetle though, so I'm like, we'll see anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, it's true. Yeah. So I saw Little Mermaid yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I saw um, that was awful. It looks awful. Yeah. Like I was thinking, like you know, I was watching it on my TV, and I'm just like, God, Avatar versus this in in terms of water, <laughs> and and it's the same company, isn't it? Aren't they both Disney? Yeah, yeah. yeah but James Cameron, you know, spends his time yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, fair enough. It's also just like if I had seen it in a movie theater, I would have been so embarrassed. Like, it looked terrible. I can't. Imagine people people saw shit on the Flash, man. But like, did, wait, did you hear the uh, Aquafina yeah. song? I did. I mean, I was, uh, I was, I saw it in the movie. I was watching rape. it. <laughs> I hated it. Um, but not, a, not a terrible movie. Yeah. Anyway, um, what would your stars be? I thought about adding stars. <laughs> to it too. Movies. It's a perfect like three stars, two and a half stars. Bad. That's not bad. Three. But that's three like a bad. normal movie, you know? Yeah. So it's like it's not it's not bad, but it's not good. Per se. No. And I wouldn't say watch it. Yeah. The Disney live action, you know, remakes of the animated movies, like they're they're very hit or miss in the sense where they're either like okay or they're terrible. You I know? like Beauty and the Beast, yeah. I haven't seen that one. I like Cinderella. Cinderella's a good one. I you know it's a sorry, fucking yeah. banger, dude? Uh Cruella. Cruella's a fucking banger. <laughs> the, I'm not even the Emma Stone one. Emma yeah. Stone. It's I do such, want to watch it's, that actually a really good movie like i'm not even i'm not even joking okay. and okay. weirdly they have the casting down for the live action characters you know like emma stone is cruella even hallie bailey is ariel and and whatnot anyway weird tangent on the disney live action <laughs> we'll get into the comics right away here the sorry, Beyonce sorry for and, the and delay Lincoln. but i have uh, one more book 
Oh, okay. I'm just going to write this down anyway. so I don't forget. Oh. oh, okay. Well, I haven't finished it, so I'm not going to get into it much. Um, and it does actually tie into a little bit of a hero story lore, so it's a little funny. But um, I got this oh. book, which won the Eisner for Best Limited Series last year, which is The Good Asian. Um, oh, yeah. I saw, I saw that in one. Image book. Yeah. And this book immediately flexes on you that like it has incredible reviews. So it says winner of the Eisner for best limited series, winner of Harvey uh, award for book of the year. Right. And then it's just more reviews of everyone saying how it's the best book ever. You got like Scott Snyder in here and shit like that. Talking about how it's, uh, no, I don't see a lot of books like where they put the reviews. I always see Tom King's. In Scott Snyder says both important and incredibly fun, incredibly fun. So he did not review this book at all. Actually, he just said, <laughs> he didn't read it. yeah, um, the reason I say this ties into a hero story lore is because when JD and I met and we went to Midtown Comics, issue one of the good Asian had come out and I bought it then That's and I did not read it. I don't know why. <laughs> Never I never read it. Read it. Yeah, I, I I think I have it. Like I think we all have those off- comics that we buy and we just never read. I have some yeah. that I've just never. Um, but this is like, I bought it because it's like a classic noir. Again, I'm talking about how much I love noir. But like, even the cover is just like you know a movie poster directed by, uh, you know the artist and the writer. Like it's literally just a movie cover, and the main character, uh, detective character in this is called Edison Hark, which is a fantastic like detective name it and is, it's yeah. when you open the book it says the good asian and edison hark mystery which implies more which i really like um i'm like a third of the way through it maybe it's really cool i like it it's um it's good this, <laughs> that's this is, all i have to say the, about it uh, tyler indie comic era yeah oh i specifically bought books that were not marvel or dc recently and i think i'm going to continue to do that i was looking at black science by Rick Remender. I love Rick Remender. And he's got a million image books, like so many image comics that are like in compendiums done, you know? So I'm looking into those. I, I really like him. So you should check out this image book called Invincible. Invincible. Yeah. Uh I've I've never heard of it, and I don't think I'm ever gonna look that up because it sounds stupid. Oh man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one day. Well, you should one read day. all 300 issues of Spawn. I mean, just if you're gonna I already have guy. It's like 350 last week. now. Yeah. yeah, last week, <laughs> just like that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Right, we'll get we'll get into the comments that came out this week real quick though. Yeah, I have um, two. Tyler and I's forever battle to watch movies this year. Um, yeah. I saw he watched Little Mermaid, so I'm like, what came out this year that I could watch to catch up? And I I watched Little Mermaid when I'm in the mood, but I yeah, watched you watched the... the Pope's Exorcist. I yeah. saw that. And I know. I only I saw you log it and i was like he watched this to catch up with me like i knew I did. you didn't want to watch that movie reason. yeah i knew you didn't want to watch that movie <laughs> why are you doing this to yourself but yeah oh my god it's an mcu movie it is, is it an, an mcu, MCU movie? movie it's i swear it's written by the people that write the mcu it, so, imagine, so i should watch it then imagine the exorcist but it's written for the mcu the 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 exorcist <laughs> in this is played by um russell uh, crow russell crow and he's quitting <laughs> The entire movie. <laughs> oh, shit. Place. Okay, maybe I will watch that then. That sounds awesome. But he's saying... <laughs> I want a funny exorcist. Why not? It's it's not a good movie per se at all, but I was yeah. so shocked over what he's doing. And Very there's like an end credit yeah. scene. What? Like there's an actual... It's not an end credit scene, but they, they film it like his end credit scene where the Pope acting very much like samuel jackson it's just like we're recruiting more people like you we have an idea for a team of exorcists and there's <laughs> and a new the, exorcist movie coming out in a couple like months too right there is no not not to, not to connect to this or anything but oh oh that's the actual exorcist yeah and this it's is like a different remake. exorcist this, this is, is yeah, completely okay. different this is based off an actual guy and the oh, actual guy that this is based off of said he did like six million exorcists in his life or something. Bullshit. But, yeah, I know. Six someone, million? Someone did if the math. If there were six million like demons to exorcise, it's, it's not, oh my God. It's not fucked. six million. It's a high number, but someone did the math and yeah, it says that he would have to do six a day since he was born to when he died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And if demons are getting our souls that easily, why don't they get like the president or something? You know, like why are they taking reagan little girl this, not the president reagan a little girl named reagan this movie like like it's so ridiculous when, russell crowe drives a drives a vespa from like spain to rome which is like an 18 hour drive or something Jesus. Like that. <laughs> a vespa. 
<laughs> when you said that you watched a uh, digital, like a you know streaming movie to catch up that came out this year, I thought you were going to say that you watched the new Adam Sandler one. My sister watched it and said it was awful. Uh, you are so not invited I, to my bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah. Oh, I think I oh, did that come hear out this about year? that. I'll have to. Is that yeah. on, is that on like Netflix, Netflix or something? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I, I I watched the trailer for it after my sister told me that. That's got to be yeah. forty three of just pure eye. It it's got a ninety three on Rotten Tomatoes though. Oh, it's got to be better than Pope's Exorcist. It's got Hunter. There's only one way to find out. Look, there's a scene. Shit, I, I look it. forward to your letterbox. Review. There is a scene where they find a map from thousands of years ago. They said, it, or not thousands, hundreds of years ago. They said it was from like the 1300s or something like that. Of or not the 1300s, like 13 year 13 kind of thing. Damn. And it, it's a map. It's like this is where all the angels from heaven. This is where they fell. And it's like a full row map. They like fell in North America and stuff. You wouldn't know what North yeah. America is. It's the map to the multiverse. There's like, it's got, there's like Antarctica and Australia. It's like this was made hundreds of years ago. It's like there wasn't such thing as a world map hundreds <laughs> of years ago. Like That's awesome. You sure it's not like a parody? No, it's not. They take it seriously. I think I think there's a part where the demon like screams at Russell Crowe and he goes, You got your your breath is bad. Like <laughs> you might need a breath mint. Yeah. Um, this this competition you're having with me, right? You always watch a movie, uh, and you're like, I'm doing pretty good. You're at 32 right now. I'm at I'm at 36. So oh. you're not gonna catch up. You are so I'm... not invited to my Batman. So I'm watching on third. Yes, I'm watching. I watched. Uh, I watched another movie today. I watched this movie called Past Lives, which is an A24 movie. Oh, how was it? Was I heard it was good. Excellent. It was very good. It made me it made, me it made me cry. It was like a it was like one of those movies about love lost. You know, you know, yeah. movies where like it's a love story, but then it doesn't work. And those are like yeah. the best types of movies. It's one yeah. Of yeah, I, I so. don't mind those. Like I, 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 I love those. The, I prefer those. I recently watched as long um, as in real guys. Our flag means death, which is a TV show, but it is. I, I've heard about our flag means death. Yeah, it, my, it's my a friends like it. Yeah, Ty, Ty Ty plays Wattini, Blackbeard. Yeah, gay gay uh, pirates. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. That's literally the plot. I heard about it. I. It's so good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> comics. Um, I read Moon Knight. Yeah. Moon Knight. Yeah. What? Well, what did you, I read? Batman and Shazam. Same. I read Shazam. And I oh, tried same. I tried to find X-Men, but it was I guess it was sold out. X-Men 26. Popular. I would say yeah. Moon Knight was uh it was good, but the run's ending soon and I'm gonna miss it. The cover's awesome. I like this cover that a lot. Who's next for Moon Knight, do you think? Who's on who who should we get? I feel like it'll stop for a bit. I don't know if we'll get another Moon Knight series right away. This seems to be wrapping up Moon Knight's story a lot, but next I say Jeff Loveness, a uh, writer of Ant Man. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's get let's I say Greg Zeb Land Wells. on art. Yeah. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I bet Greg could write an you know, all right Greg Land. story. Yeah, <laughs> it'll specifically be about um no, Moon Knight does not have a lot of no characters. Yeah, no, it I'm does not to... always uh Marlene. Yeah, I guess Marlene, yeah. But even or, then, like, I mean, he's got a new female character right now. Who's I mean, again, Scarlet, just Scarlet, uh, Layla El Fowley, Layla uh, Marilyn, Scarlet, Marilyn. Scarlet Scarab. Let's not let's not have Craig Glenn draw these people. <laughs> yeah, please no. Actually, Jesus. the facial he expressions would, are just yeah. brutal. Like, she's an did, actress. How bad, in real how bad life, was so. Batman? Did you not read it, JD? Hell no! I'm dropping it. Whoa, dropping it. Um, Dro- whoa, dropping the whole run. Okay, hear me out. Hear me out. After this run, Joker returns. Oh, I yes. couldn't even do a straight face. He sold me to come back. I, I was couldn't this even close. do a straight face. Shit. Good God. Um, Brutal. Was it bad? Yes. Did I like it? Yes. Yeah, so the, the art is very fan. good. The art is good. Yeah, I didn't even really look at this cover. This cover is like kind of weird. What is she wearing? She's wearing like a lot of nonsense. It's a Batman shirt with an X on it. <laughs> does, she yeah. leopard, does she have leopard print pants? Yeah, and then like a big Joker kind of um, uh, what is that coat? Called? Uh, it's not more. It's more of a like a, like a bathrobe almost. Yeah, kind of coat thing. And then look at Batman. <laughs> <laughs> this big silhouette. Of Batman. <laughs> he was gonna marry this woman. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Um, the art's awesome. I mean, what are we gonna say about Jorge? He's the best. It's one ever. of the best. Yeah, he, he nails it here. He's so good throughout the whole book. But man, okay. So for those who don't know, Gotham uh, War. Gotham War is Civil War with the Bat Family. 
So yeah. I understand why you want to tell that story. That that can that this will sell. Sick. This panel's sick. That reminds this me of Frank like, Miller. I was gonna say this is very Frank this is Miller. Year one. This this is a this might be one of my new favorite Jorge panels. Just I like that I one and the one yeah. where Bruce goes like this, like that. Yeah, that's also very good. Yes. But essentially, so it's they they're basically civil war for the Bat family. So Catwoman, as we talked about last week, actually yeah. says. She took every single goon in Gotham working for people like Mr. Freeze and Two-Face and said, you are all going to rob the rich. I'm going to train you. And because of that, crime went down like 75% or something like that, which is ridiculous. So every crime in Gotham was just people stealing things. There's no murder happening. (laughs) Like, I don't. Yeah, now there's not, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, no. Well, the the criminals that would be murdering people are just now stealing things. I guess, yeah. Yeah. And so obviously, like, that means. okay, crime is down, but in the end, these people are still stealing. And Catwoman proposes that the Bat family, if they see someone stealing, let it go, let it happen. Which is ridiculous in its own right, but the entire Bat family agrees, except for Damien. Because I guess the they say like the numbers, you know, prove it like or the whatever. The numbers but... don't lie. It's like Nightwing isn't going to watch someone steal. Yeah, stealing is still a crime. Like it's like a you know, it's a better crime, I all, guess, than murder. But like, it's all still... three bat girls. So they're not gonna be like, oh, that guy's robbing someone. Oh, you know, crime yeah. down. <laughs> because and that's what Batman says. Batman's like, you're gonna crimes escalate, man. Like you let someone rob someone and they might kill them, and that's what he's mad about. Someone robbed Guys. someone and murdered them, and now that person's child is an orphan. Which mm-hmm. it was like you know, single, the rest of them yeah. should you know understand because they are all orphans. He's arguing this to Tim. I'm like, isn't Tim an orphan now? Yeah. His dad's is his dad alive again or is mom no. alive again? Like, no. aren't they dead? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Batman's his dad, and he's still arguing about orphans. Um. Yeah, because because a guy goes yeah. to steal something and he gets caught, and it's this man stealing from this woman. So in self defense, the woman shoots him, and he dies. And he was a single father with a daughter. Now the yeah. daughter's an orphan. Listen, and he's Batman tells that to Tim, and Tim's like, "Yeah, well, the you numbers know, don't lie. You know, yeah, yeah. like oh, that's awful, awful." Right. Here's now. the thing: this I am chip? not so yeah, yeah. This oh. is Chip Zarsky. I am not so like uh, jaded as to think that the visual of Dick Grayson and Jason Todd both fighting Batman at the same time isn't cool. It you is. Know, like I'm like. Okay, if we're gonna ever get this, at least it's right now drawn by Jorge, um, because it looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, but again, it doesn't really make sense, you know. Mm-hmm. There's this panel, which I that love. was awesome. That was <laughs> so good. It's even cooler, like in context of the last page, because it's 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 Damien intercepting jason like mid-air oh I, I flipped the wrong page yeah well but jason goes to Jason's jump in mid air, yeah and he's like saying like time, yeah, mid-air. time for us to teach you a lesson old man and then damien just punches him in the face. yeah but it, it, that's um, satisfying because it shows the entire bat family disagrees with batman for some dumb reason but it shows that damien yeah. is still on his side and i like that so, at least this like cassandra of... kane cassandra, sorry, yeah. real quick cassandra kane Supposed to be like the greatest fighter in the Bat family, and Tin- Tinian, Tinian, he proved it during his run with Jorge. But in this, yeah. Bruce beats her by shooting a battery, or, or sorry, the, the grappling, grappling gun at her, just, and then she's just him. out. That's how he deals with. Cassidy. But he, but he, but she also got defeated by Thomas Wayne when Thomas Wayne bodied the Bat fam in Tom King's run. Yeah, maybe she's yeah. not the greatest fighter anymore. <laughs> but at least but she just, fought in that. She had a Bruce fight. even he like just, Chip, He hits her with a with a grappling. Chip hook. even knows that she's good because he has batman think like cassandra's yeah. gonna attack cassie first. will She's move first fastest. yeah yeah so you have batman's inner dialogue say like cassandra yeah. is take cassandra out first because she's the best you do it in one panel <laughs> this is a very like chip's version of bruce it's it's this panel where he's he punching, still don't like, have a hand too and he's, he's, still yeah. he's still got a metal hand. Yeah, he does. He's covered in blood, and I'm just like, this is crazy what he's like. He is pissed off. This is like every Batman writer nowadays is like, let's bring Bruce to you know ground zero, but like absolute the lowest he could possibly be, you know, rock bottom. Um, and they keep going deeper, like Tom King's run where it was like he's hit rock bottom. We're like, okay, this is fairly rock bottom. You know, Dick has been shot in the head and he got stood up at the altar. 
And now it's like, no, we're digging deeper than rock bottom. And we're just, we're going all the way down to the entire family hates him. Yeah, they all hate him. He says, I've lost everything. My home, my family, my body is failing. All I have left is the mission, being Batman. It's like, how many times is all he have left is the mission? You know, (laughs) is he ever just going to cheer the fuck up? Like, (laughs) this is your life, dude. Get over it. How many times are you going to like, punch tim in the face before he leaves you know <laughs> before he this doesn't true. come back it's, it's happened a, good point. a surprising amount of times recently yeah i or, but like before I, their trust is completely broken you know i miss early days tom king before 50 and scott snyder's or early day I batman miss... with tom king and scott snyder's tom batman yeah scott, scott snyder's, snyder's tom, tom king, king. <laughs> that would be a fucking <laughs> awesome book um Scott Snyder's Batman, the thing about his Batman, like his at least his character for Bruce was that like, you know, there's like kind of two different versions of Batman, right? And there, there's the Cape Crusader, who's like the fun one who went on the adventures where he was like going to space and shit like that and hanging out with Superman all the time. And then there's the Dark Knight. He's the one that's in Gotham and he's brooding and he's on the rooftops. Mm-hmm. And usually writers pick one or the other, but Batman is both. And Scott Snyder wrote his batman as both of those things which i i love that you know he's he's equally as liable to like quip as he is to go solve like a murder you know and he's fighting demons grinning and and, yeah yeah, going to the sixth dimension with the justice league and he's also you know fighting the court of owls and shit like he was brutal he was in serious situations but he would still come home and have like dinner with his family exactly and he was like a human you know, and he clearly like liked the people around him and enjoyed their presence as opposed to like, you know, Tom King's Batman, which he has an arc and he goes through his thing, but he's like really like a robotic, you know, he's got yeah. very little emotion and stuff like that. And now Chip's Batman, which I wasn't expecting his Batman to be like this, but it's just, he's just angry. Mad. Yeah. He's just so mad about everything. And I understand that he's going crazy that Zara and Oz in his brain is going to destroy whatever, but like, relax. He has just, a story. Chill, yeah, they, just chill for like ten minutes. They Batman. mentioned so many times, like, oh, he went through failsafe, and they went through the multiverse, and then yeah. he went through this and that and that, and he's exhausted. He's not sleeping. Yeah. He's not eating. It's like, <laughs> how, how about he? I know you're doing yeah. this because you're building to something, and like Joker's coming back next next arc. And right now, the Bat family's destroying him, and all he has is Damien. It's yeah. like. You're what must be building to something. What is Joker coming back from? What was his last appearance? Joker War? Oh, was it Joker God. War? Yeah. Oh no, no, no. They're selling it in this, actually, aren't they? It's um there's an ad in this. It's a double page the, ad. The one where he got pregnant. He, he, is it? No, 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 it's not that. It's <laughs> I'm not gonna find this. Batman Joker Deadly Duo. Here it is. This? No, that's I don't know they if have that to... was canon. I don't, I don't know either, but they have to get in control way. of these ads, by the way, because like I'll flip a page and it's a double page ad and I'll go, all right, you know, they, they do that. I'll go to the next page. There's an ad there. Oh, God. And then there's an ad there. Yeah. And then the next page from an ad is another double page at some point. And it's like, I get it. I, I read these books, dude. You don't mm-hmm. have to keep selling them to me. I don't know. Besides, oh, besides the art, like it, the writing's just not. Good. I'm still gonna read it because it's Batman. But uh, see, this is where I don't feel the loyalty to it, and this is where I drop. I feel the loyalty to Batman it. more than Spider Man, at least Same. for like reading monthly. Because and, well, I can. You've been quoted as saying, "Amazing Spider Man." Yeah, book, just book have to read. Yeah, thank God I have. Thank God I didn't say that. Actually, I never said that. Who said yeah. that? Oh yeah, you don't. Uh, have stuff, I forgot. Pull, pull up. Pull yeah. up. <laughs> Jamie, um, pull that clip. <laughs> but at least for Batman, I think I'm more accepting of bad or stupid Batman stories than I am of bad or stupid Spider-Man stories because like I don't feel like they're trying to ruin Batman but like with no. Spider-Man they, they're like trying to for some reason <laughs> yeah you know yeah but for Batman at least I'm like you know the next writer will do something different but for Spider-Man I'm, I'm like he's locked into this like that's just how it is mm-hmm. you know they destroy Batman's character, but even though it's like angry Batman, he still yeah, it's usually an arc like at Batman. least. And he's still I'm yeah. reading this, I'm like, he's not acting like himself. I'm just like, no, he's just angry. Yeah, and it's, even it's then, like hard there's to read a Batman comic. Yeah, it's hard to read a Batman comic where you're like, that is 100 percent out of character. He would never do that. Because Batman is so many things where you're just like, Yeah, I guess, you know, in this situation, he would, mm-hmm. you know. 
like there, there's a moment the, the one good moment that i liked in this issue was bruce is like he leaves the fight he's just sitting there he's thinking and then damien walks in and he's just like he looks at the robot hand that he has and says remarkable it's strong it clearly emits smoke what else can it do i think i want one and bruce goes damien it's not something you want <laughs> like, yeah, you, my, you don't want a robot you my hand yeah, got cut my... off <laughs> i didn't get I'm showing like damien is still 14 here like he's yeah is showing this but then bruce says i say the words but do i believe them the hand that gave the other the other batman gave me it makes me stronger better it's like he's going crazy he's just going nuts he's just he's just just going insane he is yeah so it's kind of it's it's you know it is what it is i guess yeah batman's always going to go insane it's a it's a cycle i don't like it see you next issue (laughs) i just on the the legacy numbering uh comic key says it's like a new thing where they have like a list so someone made a list of all the legacy numbering. I've read 240 out of 903 issues. It's kind of wild. Batman? Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm that's like, kind of God. The straight Batman. Batman. Can you send that in the chat? Because I want to click on mine. I think um, I can. I don't know. Can you just click you on like a character the... and it tells you? Or how do you get that? I got you. I got you. I got you. No, usually when you click on a comic, like if you scroll down to the bottom, it'll show you what list they're in. So sometimes they're in just people's personal lists. Oh, I lists. see. Batman. But I just sent it to Oh, I see. I see. They did one for Flash. Um, like my my Flash one was like five hundred. Did Did you like this little this oh, Batman? Oh, Pig, this, oh that was I yeah. actually kind of liked that. Yeah. Uh. Well, when Professor <laughs> Pig showed up, I was like, "Oh, we're doing more Morrison stuff, are we, Chip?" But uh, Pig. So you know, Batman villains are underground, but we got Pig, Ventriloquist, uh, Firefly, Black Mask, Scarecrow, who <laughs> looks. God, that new scarecrow design, he does not fit just sitting at a fucking table. No. <laughs> um, uh, Calendar Man, Two Face, uh, yeah, and Pig. Oh, and then he's, and then they're inviting in the Mad Hatter, which is, I guess, a cool little Sinister Six or whatever. But, you know, they're not the Joker. It's not like it, they're not going to really do anything, I don't mm-hmm. think. Yeah. Uh, Urban right. and external browser. I want to see how many of these I have. Well, it's probably they're probably going to team up, and then the Batman is going to team up to fight them. And it's going to be yeah, and then Batman's going to be like, "What am I doing? You know, like I I I was fighting the family, but really and the family's going to be like, oh, we we were wrong, blah blah.' blah. You think they're going to say the only, that? I don't know, man. The only person that makes sense to join Selena is Jason. I think that's Selena. it. Um, God, Bruce says some mean things to Jason in this issue, real quick. Like he says, <laughs> it's like I he's... made a murder or something. <laughs> In his mind, he thinks I created a mass murderer in Jason. <laughs> like that's, but he says out loud to Jason, he says, "If you believe in Selena's plan, if you think one death is fine, if it stops more death, oh, then yeah. shouldn't I kill you?" I'm just like, oh my god, that's your son. <laughs> that, that is your adopted him. <laughs> did die? Actually, did yeah, die? And, and you're threatening to kill you. him again. <laughs> And he says They've that in front Batman. of like Batman was family. so much better when I was a kid. I swear. When you were <laughs> you a kid, kid <laughs> in 1940, I can't find this thing. I don't know why it's not letting me go into like on the app. But oh, well, JD is the character at the end. Then uh, it, it ends Literally with uh, okay. on, like the most recent Batman issue on Comic Geeks. And scroll all the way down, and it'll say Batman Legacy numbering, <laughs> and then click yeah. on that. Well, it ends because the man Bruce hasn't been living at Wayne Manor in a long time, and because of that, he hasn't been paying for it. So Gotham just put it for sale, and someone bought it. So he goes to see who bought it, and it's Vandal Savage. Yeah, for some reason it's Vandal. I was, I would have never, I would not have guessed Vandal Savage being like the guy at the end of the book. But yeah, he he bought the. Wasn't Vandal Savage in in Morrison's Batman as well when he was going through time or something? Maybe. Yeah, he remember. was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come yeah. on, Chip. Chip, what are we doing? What are we doing? I know you're yeah, done yeah, with yeah. Daredevil, but um, what, what, what are we doing? Here? What are we even doing here? It's funny that like Chip on Batman was like my dream. And yeah, then Chip now and it's Jorge, dude. Like, I don't like it. I like the first issue. That's about it. Yeah. And I like the I, last I read failsafe because it you know it takes like five minutes to read failsafe because there's Cause nothing just a to fight it. Scene. <laughs> yeah. Um. And you know that's exactly what it is. It's just like cool to look at. Yeah. It's it cool, cool to, to see at. Chip draw or Chip write Superman. That's cool. You know. Yeah, his Superman but, is good. I want to read his Justice League the last ride book. He should write just because he can fail safe when like Green Arrow appeared. It was exciting. And then, well, we still have a Justice, Justice League, League book, book coming out, don't we? Yeah, apparently like, in December. That's what the leak what? said. We do. I didn't know this. 
Well, no, remember like, when like they teased um, the return of the Justice League? Like they they posted that picture where it's just like, here's our plan for uh, Donna DC. Yeah. And then, but it's like blacked out the rest. But then, if you put it, people a filter it on it. Yeah, you can yeah. see what their plans is, and their plan for December is Return of the Justice League. What's the team? Is it good or no? No, we, we don't no know. Idea. Just, it just says the Return of the Justice uh, League. We don't know who the creative team is or who the actual league is. But I don't know if there's a writer that I'm like, yeah, he needs to write Justice League. But like, think because we just had like night terrors, which took like two months off of DC. The Titans were the main league for like. Four think issues think or about Night Terrors. Night Terrors makes no fucking sense because, like, at least I don't need, what was like, it even Convergence about? Convergence and Future State was in between something, so it was like a two month occupation of like nothing. Yeah. As opposed to like this was two months in the middle of every ongoing. Yeah. Like like reading Shazam today, I was like, what the fuck happened in Shazam? The last Shazam issue came out like four months ago. It was in May. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We missed we missed out on the, issue on the entire three. summer. Right. Same thing with Green yeah. Lantern uh, yeah. issue three. I'm like, what the fuck happened in the second? One? I can't remember. Carol. Th- th- I, don't, I don't know. Like Sinestro's the, Carol, I, right? But yeah, like even Shazam. Like they they cut to like the the dinosaur that they have in the house, and I was like, what? what when did this happen? <laughs> right. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There even the issue starts with like Freddie Freeman being kidnapped by the by the gods, and I was right. Like, I guess that was from the end of the last one, but I don't remember. Yeah. Well, when did this happen? <laughs> Yeah, my, I don't my know. point being that night terrors was at like, least for batman like you you come back starting a new arc right yeah and same with and superman they're ne- and they're not gonna ever not publish batman like they're gonna publish batman and batman night terrors but shazam it's just gonna be shazam night terrors or whatever you know yeah so yeah. It, i don't know it's, it's a little be a confusing dumbass. but the trade but, is gonna be annoying you know when you see when you're gonna see that big omnibus of night terrors yeah and it's gonna be like there forever because no one's gonna buy it no one's i'm just gonna be pissed I'm just gonna be, <laughs> just gonna be mad been, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that being said shazam was pretty pretty good <laughs> yeah uh, dan, dan mora is the true master class at dc yeah he it was he, yeah oh god the art is so good. Oh, God. I'm just flipping through it right the now. Story, um, so all the gods are taking their turns on on being like taking over Shazam, and that's why he's been doing so much fucked up stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. I, I didn't really see that coming. I still don't, I don't like the I didn't the really understand the Gorilla City bit, but me neither. Well, it's the like, Shazam. Who, who was, it's like the who's possessing the gorilla though. Well, that that could have been like just one of the Shazam gods, which is like Zeus, Hercules, Hercules, Atlas, Mercury, Solomon, Solomon, yeah. Solomon. Yeah, You're like spelling so. out the letters in your head right now. Yeah, I was, but I, I like I skipped one. And and, I was like, oh. I mean, is this a character like it, like that already exists? Emperor Gargox, Gargox, this guy, I've or is he like from before. some like? I've never seen comic. him. I was so. thinking it was going to be a Brainiac related thing, and then I'm like, oh, never mind. Kind of looks like Brainiac. Well, but I bet Brainiac he's like in Superman right now. He's probably some classic. Oh, right, or something, you know. I yeah, Emperor. I read the Superman annual last night. Actually, it was very good. It's good, right? Yeah, Brainiac at the end. <laughs> I'll get on it. I will start. I'll start reading Superman with the next issue. It's I've decided. very good. Well, I thought you were reading it. Uh, nope, was not. <laughs> Gargox is from the sixties. He yeah, I see. In Doom Patrol number ninety-one. Doom Patrol. Oh, okay. oh that makes sense. <laughs> None of us care. Oh yeah, been in all Doom Patrol books. Appearance Mark of Mark Death, Wade Doom Patrol issue Doom eighteen. Patrol. Yeah, why isn't he writing the Doom Patrol? If he would be the only person that could get me to read the Doom Patrol, same here. <laughs> same yeah. here. Mark Wade and Dan Mora. He did write them in uh, his Brave World's and the Bold title in like two thousand eight. And yeah, and World's <laughs> Finest. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I really want a Superman Shazam team up by Wade and Mora. That would be very nice. That's, that's all I want from the series. I'm going to keep reading it because. I like Shazam in general. I read the I read the Johns run, and I was hoping it would go on longer, like he said he would. <laughs> I'm sure when it's Mark Wade finishes this run, I'll keep Mark Wade has not written Superman yet. The main title, the almost main title, the Superman. almost. Yeah, I, there was like a big. Didn't he get blacklisted or something? There's like a yeah. big controversy around it. Yeah. He wasn't allowed to write Superman for what? the longest time. What? They Why? What? Something about there birthright, is... right? Yeah, there is something behind it. I don't remember. There's like some, I yeah, something like he went behind the backs of the people running DC, and I don't even know if he knew he was doing it, and they didn't like that, so they banned him from being able to write Superman. 
<laughs> like the main book Superman. He could write, you know, Birthright or whatever, but he could never write the main book Superman. Huh. Something like that. Which is, remember when we interviewed him, he said his favorite character was Superman? Yeah. <laughs> and he could so easily write Superman. Like, that's like a layup. I mean, like, on Superman. I mean, like he basically and, is in, in World's yeah. Finest, which is fantastic. Yeah, he's never written Superman or a Batman, you know, the main books, but he gets to write both of them in the World's Finest. And he's he understands these characters perfectly, like both of them. Yeah. He's got that Cape Crusader Batman that I love. Yeah. Even like his, oh, JD, you're, you're caught up in World's Finest? Yeah. Did you agree that like the the Metal Men arc was actually like extremely good? <laughs> yeah, Metal Men is one of those interesting characters where I'm like, they're not the worst. They like, appear like, and I'm just like they oh. appeared in New Fifty Two Justice League, and I was like, they're not that bad. Yeah. They were. I didn't like the really kind of versions of them in the New Fifty Two though. I didn't really yeah. get it. Like, isn't isn't who where? who this made was Metal so Men? cool? This was the coolest thing I've ever read. <laughs> who made who invented Metal, the Metal Men? Goes back to the Silver Age, I think. Yeah, but was that like another Kirby thing or something? Like the Challengers or something? Uh, I mean, Metal Magnus, Man. isn't it? Ma- Magnus is like oh, in the comics. It's that's like the scientist that made them. Robert Kiner and Ross Andrew. So just two guys, just two writers. They created the Metal Men. Showcase number three. But uh, I wanna, uh, are 62. you reading World's Finest, Tyler? Uh, No, I'm not caught up. There's an arc where Amazo's here. And if he touches someone's skin, like he gets their powers, and he's destroying the league, so they send every single robotic hero after him. Yeah, and it's cool. so yeah, good. I, I, I'm probably going to start catching up around when that, I, you know, like as much as I don't want to have a sequel to Kingdom Come, like another one at least, you know, it's yeah. Mark Wade. So it's right, not it's like your, it's your thing to be a sequel of. Yeah, it's like at least, Shine, it, at least it and is he Mark did, Wade, yeah. Yeah, I feel like he did the sequel anyway. He did the Kingdom, didn't he? Right. So he's he's not even like Alan Moore about it, you know, where he no, doesn't right. want to do the sequels well, or anything. Obviously so like he was cool with the Jeff Johns Justice Society. Stuff. Yeah, exactly. So and that was fucking sick as well. J- uh, Kingdom Come Superman on the Justice Society. So mm-hmm. I think I just have a Watchmen approach to a lot of these things, <laughs> but like that's really only applicable to Watchmen. Yeah, you know? I understand that. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that kind of applies to that, like where I'm where like, an- do not writer, that. Like where another writer wrote a sequel to like a book. V for Vendetta 2 by Jeff Johns. <laughs> I, I want to read it. I have it down on my, on my tablet. I just haven't read yeah, it. This was the only DC Marvel book I bought recently. I, I guess I didn't mention this, but I haven't started reading it. So uh, actually, but I did buy V for Vendetta. No, I, but in DC Comics, bruh, still technically DC I, Comics. Well, technically it's, it's, got the DC, it's got the DC logo on it. Actually, it's DC Black Label, actually. Oh, okay. Which okay. Alan Moore must fucking hate. Yeah, perhaps Moore's most powerful work. That's what it says. Are you Are you going to um, read that as well? V for Vendetta? Yeah. I or mean, I bought it. it. No, I'm going to read it. I haven't read it yet. Oh. Yeah. Well, I thought you just liked the mask. I do like the mask. Nobody cared who I was. Until I put on the mask. Oh, oh, is it Bane voiced? <laughs> it's not. I don't think like once every three episodes. Yeah, we have, we have to save it. We have to save it for for Australian man. <laughs> I hate we that man. You got you got to read World's Finest. It's like the metal what, men what the attack. Fuck is Harper going to read World's Finest? He's promised for so long. He ain't getting his money until he reads it. That's all I'm going to say. Mm. <laughs> oh, so you hope he never reads it. Oh, God, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, World's Finest Teen Titans is pretty good too. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm caught up on that. Yeah, it's As... Donna and Garth is odd, but <laughs> and and I told you for some reason Mark Wade using young people terms just bothers me. Well, even in Shazam, in, in this, this, in this Shazam issue, issue he says sauce. Did he say sauce this issue? Yeah, he does. It's right after he's at Gorilla City. It's when he's like flying away to. Yeah, to he's the like, that was kind of sus. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, that's a uh, sussy baka. I, I think, like, I think that's fine. I think it some bo- some words I get. It bothers me. I know. And I get it. Billy's a kid. He should talk like a kid. But it bothers me. It'd be weird if, like, Batman said it. <laughs> like, if the next, like, she's the issue, like, Billy pulls up, like, oh, like I'm going to hate it. <laughs> like, like what, if, what if they do, like, a scene where they, like, the Shazamily records, like, a TikTok? I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> but the, but didn't they did they not already? I mean, they're like doing YouTube like, videos or something, right? 
right they, they have a website i think but... the only reason they haven't recorded a tiktok yet is because maybe they just can't like do tiktok oh Oh, like Maybe. legally? Well, they could just yeah, say it's it's talk yeah, talk. Yeah, or something. They could probably say it though. Tic Tac yeah. and the recording dances, like yeah. Like I I'm surprised that's not they... like I can see I like would... Darla doing it in our own time in the background, right. and that's about right, it. Like recording them all transitioning, like that's the joke. <laughs> I'm surprised that that's not in like that Tim Drake Robin book by it, Megan it Fitzmartin. Be. It, it probably was yeah. recording a TikTok or Bat Girls. Any Bat Girls? It's in that. Apparently Batman that wasn't was sad that it was bad. Aren't because, they like, like four? T- Wait, yeah. I was just thinking like they scaled them down. Wait, so ben- Bruce is like beating up a bunch of kids. Like, well, like Dick is grown up and Jason's grown up and Tim is like 19, 18? They, What is he? So, so with that, they they were acting very young at first, and someone asked the writer on Twitter how old they think they are, and uh-huh. she said, "I believe they are fourteen and 15. And then everyone was like, whoa, no, 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 no. They're like, not, what? They're not, they're not. What are you yeah, talking yeah. about? That would, that would also make Tim Drake a, uh, you know, yeah, statutory it make him colossus. Yeah. They're, they're both like, and they, <laughs> they started explaining to the writer, like, no, they've had, like, history with Tim. Like, Steph was, like, Steph was going to college at one point. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, they are, they should be, like, she 18, pregnant, 19. Yeah. yeah. She so was pregnant, yes. They never That's said in canon the anymore, book though. that they're this age. The writer just. That's a good story. It should be canon. So the writer said, okay, I, I understand. Uh, I'm just making them a little goofy, but they are around 18. So the right. the writer just thought that they were that age. I mean, ages are hard to do in comics anyway. Like, especially with like teenagers and stuff. Like it, especially with Superman, Batman. I mean, who cares? How yeah. old is Batman? I say he's like, like 40. 40. You know, like yeah. we, the Dan DiDio thing, like we yell at him because like, why sideline Nightwing? But when you really sit to think about it, like it doesn't make any sense. His age, Batman is getting so much older, just like by the virtue of how much older everyone else is getting. You know, well, how old is he's Dick when 45. he was Robin? He's forty five. Four, I was thinking like, you, I was thinking like, like forty. I I was thinking forty as well. Like, but still, like he's aging out of Batman. Like you know, athletes are retired by the time they're forty. True. And he's doing this Tom, every Tom single. Brady. Oh, but he Tom he Brady. wouldn't. Re- Bruce Wayne yeah. wouldn't retire though. That's the yeah. thing. I know, but like, at what point is Batman in canon going to be fifty? And at one point, and is he going to then going to be sixty in canon? You know, like, I don't think he'll ever reach sixty. Yeah, I can see no fifty way. though. I can see fifty. I don't. They're going to give him the Hal Jordan. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, if Reed you Richards. ask them today, they'd be like, he's thirty. You know, like they yeah. would never say he's even forty. He's, he's is like, like twenty. To them, you know, the, the back girls right is like so he's like twenty one. Like, like trying to age people. Like Reed Richards yeah. and Ben Grimm fought in World War Two. Like, yeah. and that made <laughs> sense in ni- that made sense in nineteen sixty one. But it doesn't yeah, make I mean, sense in twenty twenty three. Even true. even the Punisher, he fought, he fought in Vietnam. That yeah, was his war. Yeah. If he fought in the you Vietnam it, like in Vietnam today, Iraq. he's eighty, seventy. Yeah, right. He fought yeah. in Iraq now. And, they just yeah. gotta keep changing it a little bit. Yeah. Well, there's the whole thing where it's like, yeah. For for Marvel, they say like 20 years ago, whatever year it is, the Fantastic Four got their powers, and then you. Well, they they the scale is like every four years. Well, when Stan was in charge, everything moved in like some form of real time. That's why Peter graduates in like issue 38 or something, right? Because that's like. It's enough like months years, after yeah. when he's introduced that he's yeah. now a teen. Well, yeah, back in the 60s, 18. they actually used to do like month to month. was actually month to month. Like it was yeah, month it was like a month, month went by every Every issue. Fantastic Four issue was like, wow, like like Johnny's going to college now. That, yeah, that's, and, and, but, when when, and, uh, when Galactus and Silver Surfer first appear, that first issue, the like B story of that is Johnny moving into college. Yeah, yeah. And so at some, it wasn't always like that as a thing. Like at some point they froze it. It was, I think, when Peter went to college, pretty much is when they when they froze the time scale and they were like, "We're slowing this down. Every every issue is a day and not right. a fucking month," you know. And I want to say that fifteen years have passed or something like all, that. It's also like Captain America off the ice. Like again, it doesn't make yeah. sense if you use by modern time because he was in the ice. You know, yeah. Like, 60 years, 70 years. He's the only character years. that will always be like a, a World War II vet. Yeah. But that's the thing is Captain America is the only character we really think about where like the retcon is like the history that we respect, you know, because the yeah. Avengers thing was the retcon for where he's been. But now it's like it's the only lore we really know for Captain America. Like 
imagine if they didn't do that. Like that's it would have been right. so weird. But the the fact that they did retcon that was genius. It's good. But like is Jake Eric still a World War II vet? I mean probably, right? Yeah. But they're like, just gonna say that like, this they're gonna say that the speed force ages you slower or something like that. Yeah, but then wouldn't okay. Joan be like dead? Yeah. Well he but you know, <laughs> like residual speed force oh, being speed around force Riz, I forgot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the it, opposite about, like, of the Spider Man race. He starts thing. aging in GSC. I, I kinda say like, it's about yeah. Magneto though. Like it's hard to not make Magneto ancient in live action because if he's supposed to be like a, a, a World kid War II during bit. the Holocaust. Yeah. And it kind of like the iron in my blood is <laughs> yeah, it has to be World War II. Like people always say, oh, you know, switch it to some other genocide. Right, Frank Castle, it's like Frank Castle, you can move to like Iraq yeah, but like or when people but say that move. about Magneto, they're like, make it, you know, some other genocide. It's like these are not interchangeable Pants, things, yeah. man. You know, these are millions of people that died, and his story is so specific to that. Right. It kind of has to be, you know, Nazi Germany. But yeah, how do you? Because we've established again. It's so difficult for Magneto to exist in a universe where Captain America exists. Right. Because I, Captain I think, America, I think in the MCU, it's almost impossible yeah. to do Magneto. Almost. Yeah, unless you go mm. back and you do it in the 60s or something, you know? But like, if we say <sighs> Captain America horrible. came out of the ice in, you know, 20, 2023 today, and he's been in the ice for 80 years, then Magneto is 80 years older than he was then, and he's 100. Right, yeah. maybe in his nineties or hundreds, right? Yeah, and I think he's in a clone body of himself right now, where he was DH like thirty years ago. So right. they're working I mean, with it, but right, there's tacky, ticky tacky yeah. ways to explain it. But yeah, but you kind of have to that, do like, it like that. As time goes on, it gets harder to explain. And it was funny reading those original Fantastic Four issues of like Reed Richards was old in issue one, and like yeah, someone in the in the questions page asked like, why does he have white streaks? And Stan said it was the stress of fighting in World War Two that he has good <laughs> streaks. Yeah. yeah and that was 20 years prior as well like i can't remember what issue but at one point they go back to reed's old college and there's like a, i don't know like a anniversary class or something like that and he's like oh uh you know class of 1940 something like reed richards graduated <laughs> college in the 40s yeah <laughs> yeah and sue is pretty young sue's well, like and there's a weird 20. john Byrne issue about that isn't there yeah well there's a john they, Byrne retcon where he, he like he liked her as a child canonically they met because reed was her dad's lab aide they met like when she was a kid and he was like a teenager and then they didn't see each other for again again for years and then they ran into each other on the street like years yeah. later well and there was a there was another one where he moved into like her aunt's canon. house or something that's matt fraction i think or okay like yeah that. i remember reading yeah. that Maybe that, maybe the other and thing fraction addressed in the letter page, like uh, it's not rape, you know. It was, but like, there's <laughs> nothing we can do about it, man. You yeah. know, it was <laughs> like, no, <laughs> it's the lore, it's they established this forever ago, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not, yeah, it is yeah. funny though, it is weird. Hard, it just, the best way to think about it is just to not think about it, <laughs> yeah, right. That's and the, and the thing about Asian comics, but yeah, no, you're right, like about like Batman, like Dan Didio, as much as he's the villain, he's kind of right, like. Yeah. Wally West it's his three, job to think about that. Wally West has three fucking children and has been married for years. And Barry's like, yeah, I'm kind of just dating Iris, maybe. <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> didn't he just propose? Right, right, exactly. Yeah. Like, mm, that's yeah. true. Yeah, <laughs> it's so wow. weird. Yeah, it's it was his job to be mad about that. Like, and and right. it was not our job to be mad about that. Our job was to read the comics, Correct. and we were mad at him because he actually has to make them make sense. You know, yeah he has a stressful job yeah it's whatever i mean he's gone now i i don't the thing is i don't really i feel bad for anyone who has that job you know because you have to take a lot of hits you kind of have to like throw yourself in front of every bullet you know basically yeah you gotta be the target and yeah. for some reason jim lee never gets hate like they were technically partners <laughs> he makes like, good art mean? though that's because he would draw a cover Bro, and everyone Batman would be like, one yeah. in a hundred. Yeah, Batman one in a hundred variants. Yeah. Superman yeah. Unchained, I forgot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen his variant covers for Batman 125? Yeah, his, <laughs> his one in 500 variant cover that would cost you a thousand dollars. I have That's action cool. comics over there. Oh. They're right there. That's action comics. Yeah, the action thousand. comics number one. Yep, signed by him. Signed by, <laughs> signed by him? Signed by Superman? Oh, wait, signed no, a thousand. Stan. I didn't even hear you say number one. <laughs> signed by Stan Lee, because Stan yeah. Lee will sign anything. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you ever see that like online? That I'll, see like poster. A, I'll see like Transformers number pin. one from the 80s signed yeah. by Stan Lee. I'm like, why did he Punisher sign that? poster? Remember we talked about that? The Punisher m M&M yeah, crossover? I hate that. I hate so funny. <laughs> Stan Lee signed it. That's so funny. Well, he yeah. did make both those characters, so. He did create both of those characters. <laughs> I guess that's uh that's all folks. Yeah. What what episode was this again? 243? 243. Yeah. Okay, so 250. Yeah, all right. 250 is coming, coming up. up. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming up. Well, yeah, JD says he has a plan, so we'll we'll see. Man has a plan. Is it violent? Yeah, yeah of course. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Uh we'll be back next week. And Australia Man is still banned. So still dead. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh bye.